Bang! Eve Knives. I'm Jared, and we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Live on Neves Knives. How is everybody doing tonight? Hopefully all is well. And yes, that was, or that is the Archer in the thumbnail. I just put it in the thumbnail because this has not left my pocket since I got it. I want to, uh, one, get a review on it, and I want to do a full in-depth review on it. So I've already sharpened it, and like I said, I've been carrying the hell out of it. It is really, really good. Everybody keeps asking me, not everybody, but a lot of people have asked me about it compared to the Nefaris, which I can totally see why they're asking. This is a straight back. This is a clip point, though. So while they have some similarities, um, they're also vastly different. But both are, are incredible, absolutely incredible. And because this one's USA made, you know, um, I'm obviously going to have some bias towards it. But in all seriousness, this is their best model that they've ever done. Uh, I mean, not like they had like 100 models or anything. But damn, man, if this is a sign of what we're going to see in the future from this company, this is a, it kind of reminds me, and I'm not trying to put it on the level of a Koenig, but it kind of reminds me of a Koenig to some extent of, you know, just how great the detent is, how stupid smooth the action is. Um, you know, the, the, the machining is just insane. Uh, tactile does an incredible job. Like, look at how they put the lines inside the hole that match the micro milling on the scales. Now this is expensive. Yes, it is. But when I think of other companies that are, you know, not so massive, you know, smaller USA made companies. And I think of how much they're charging. And then I look at what we're getting here. Um, I, I think it's, it's about right there. Let me explain the bench made, whatever the fuck it's called for $522. That knife is absolutely not worth five. It's absolutely not worth $400. It's probably not even worth 350. It's probably worth about 250, maybe to 300. This to me is like worlds leagues above that. So not only in like the action, the tolerances, you know, just, just everything, the heat treatment, heat treatment, uh, 6364 technically Tactile, as far as right now, on camera, has gotten the 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 best edge retention test of all magnet cut that I've tested, uh, and that was when they switched to sixty three sixty four. Now that's for production knives, but um, but yeah, which is a shame because I think I'd really like the narrows. I think I would too. If it wasn't so damn crazy, stupid, retarded, expensive. Uh, but you know what? Actually, I tried it and I, I I wasn't a big fan of it. Let me explain. The thing is so thin in the hand. You can't bear down on that. Like, like there's a, a point for any knife. Like there's that one, that trade model that came out. I have one. Um, it's USA made, but it is the most uncomfortable knife in the world because it is so 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 thin like it's so thin that it's like you know it's like trying to to cut with a like a giant paper clip or something like it's crazy crazy painful to uh to push it through anything well the narrows uh, is kind of like that too it's very not to that extreme but still very very thin while it might be nice and slicey and the blade geometry is amazing on it um it's it, it's difficult to call something a mega slicer if it's not going to be very ergonomic. So the next thing was the detent was so light on the one I tried. Like you could just go like this and it would just shake out. Like it was so, so easy to just, it was like on the, the, the more dangerous side of light. Um, so it, like I said, when I tried it, I was like, what, five, $500. What are we talking about? You can pick up a Benjamin Narrows um, new in box used for 300 all day from where i haven't seen it um maybe I, are you talking about like on the secondary market uh t -t 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 the ooh, bang <laughs> how is benchmade still selling new models i don't know if they are i don't i have no idea i don't think that i th so i think you see a big indicator when you really look around and you really pay attention 
you will see there's dealers i'm not naming any names or anything but you'll see dealers are really trying to push it because they have them in stock and they have them probably a lot of them they need to they need to sell them so uh but you know shout out to them it doesn't props to them you know just sell it do whatever you got to do but when you you see like something like that and they're pushing it you know a little bit hard you, you know it's for a reason they're trying to give it as much exposure as possible to sell it because if you look at the comments this is the part that like and i'm not saying they haven't addressed it because i don't know maybe they have maybe they haven't but look at the comments of any one of those videos the majority of comments are all negative towards that knife so that should shine a big light to the dealer you know jared can we talk about katsu nas thank you for dropping my flashlight um thank you rickett appreciate the the six crackers uh jared can we talk about the katsu knives i'm thinking about getting one shortly which one are you gonna thinking about getting they got a lot of great ones so um you know what remet sent me a knife to give to you guys uh by the way um got it right here brand new in the box so um i don't know when we're gonna give it away i thought about doing it here but i don't know we'll see um but um Katsu does a good job. They have, they have some great knives. I'm not sure which one you're looking at, but um, I've yet to have really had a bad one. Even their budget knives are good. Um, you know, just make sure, like, if you want a clip, make sure it has a clip because they have some models that don't have clips, but they have also the same models with clips. So just make sure when you per make your purchase, if you're buying one of the budget ones, you're gra grabbing one with a clip. If you want a clip. Um, the ZK... All right, I gotta. I hate when they don't have like actual names. <laughs> um, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that one's dope. Uh, um, the titanium one with the ZDP 189. Um, they got the the ZDP 189 plane, and then they also have the Damascus. No wait, it's a San Mai and then a Damascus um one. But yeah, no, it, it's it's amazing. It's a great front flipper. Um. You know, it you can see the Japanese influence. Um, it's not made in Japan, it is made in China, but the designer is, is a Japanese gentleman, and all his designs are gonna be you know Japanese because he's Japanese. So it, it's a good knife. And if you want basically like a budget rock stud, that's what you want to get. Uh, they're vastly different, but still, you, you know what I'm saying. Um, Hilltown Creation, shout out to you, man. Thank you for becoming a member, and by the way. I bought some um, some stuff. I bought a diamond rod with angles. Well, I think it's only one angle all the way around. Um, and then a little ceramic rod. It was, it's called an Arkansas, but I don't think it's an Arkansas stone. But I could be wrong. It might be. I'm not sure. I think it's ceramic. But either way, I bought these um, to give to one of the members so um i bought doubles of them so i got myself them um i needed a new diamond rod so uh we're gonna do some videos on that but i wanted to get one for you guys because i know a lot of you guys don't um don't have stones or rods for recurves and if you do get yourself a rod or or stones for recurves you will fall in love with recurves because recurves work really well. Like they, they, they absolutely um, help you stay in a cut. It helps trap materials. The difference between slicing with a, a blade with a recurve and one that doesn't have one, it, it's, it's crazy how long, like, it's almost like it makes the cut for you in a way. But the problem is, is people can't sharpen them or don't know how. And it's easy. It's the same as sharpening anything else. You just need, thin stones um uh, what's up jared what's the crusade against steel honing rod oh <laughs> i'm gonna do another video man i gotta do another one it's crazy how much kickback i get on the metal honing rods and it's always it's funny to me because these people have an, and i'm not trying to talk shit but i'm absolutely talking shit they have no idea what they're talking about and then they're telling me i'm doing it wrong and i know what they're trying to say what they're trying to say and i'm just going to help you guys out they're trying to say that you're not supposed to go forward you're supposed to go backwards which is bullshit that's bullshit 
The only it doesn't even make sense if you understand the the edge bevel at a microscopic level. The only thing a metal one does is it takes the teeth that wind up going like this, basically, and because the teeth you know are just like serrations, right? And then they bend, right? And they go like that. So all it does is help push them back to true. That's it. That's all it does. It doesn't add teeth. In fact, it actually messes up the teeth because what happens is, is while it'll realign them, it also scratches the, down the, the apex side to side. So instead of the scratches running the direction you want, they're running the direction you don't want. And going backwards will make no difference because the teeth, it's not going to matter when you're pushing back the teeth, whether you're going forward or backwards, you can do either one. Also, um, another thing is that with a ceramic, the ceramic adds microscopic serrations. Um, it, it, uh, it, well, it just depends. So you have the choice. That's what's beautiful about a ceramic. You can micro bevel with it. You can polish your edge with it. You can hone your edge with it. You can add, uh, serrations. You could also not add them. You can do what people try to make a steel one do by just pushing back the teeth. Um, you could do that. You just got to use light pressure. So there's so many things you can do with a ceramic over a steel one. And I just think it's hilarious how people will tell me how a butcher, how a butcher knows more than I do. Like I had this one guy say, you should go to uh, your local meat market and ask your butcher. He'll teach you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like, the butcher's a butcher, right? Yes, he sharpens knives. And I'm not talking shit about any butcher out there. Um, you know, I, I like my meat. So, but if you, uh, if you're a butcher, you're a butcher, right? Yes, you sharpen because you are a butcher, but that doesn't make you a knife sharpener. That doesn't make you knowledgeable about knife sharpening and the, the, at a microscopic level. And Night's Edge, I've been a member for two months, been watching you for two years. Hell yeah. Best in the biz. Thank you, Night's Edge. I appreciate that, man. That means a lot. Two years, man. Time is flying. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but thank you for the 10 bones. I'm going to call you Yankee. Um, hey, Jared, is every steel used by Hinder a subpar heat treatment right now? Is there a steel that he uses you recommend over others? Should I avoid the S45? So I have i don't know, but I've heard the S45 is good. I recently had one in from a friend and I sharpened it. And it was fine. Um, I didn't test it though. You know, I just sharpened it. And, but you know, the sharpening went well. It deburred just fine. Uh, I didn't have any issues. Now I didn't take it to a polish to see like how it would react or anything like that. Because when you do that, you can see you get indicators like um, whether or not it, it's uh, hard or not. Because most steels that will take a a polish at high HRCs don't very well at low hrcs they wind up coming out slicker but um but i've heard s45 from them is pretty good i don't know though uh i've i've only had it in a few times uh well i've had it in a lot of times for sharpening but i've never had it in for for like testing steve's in the house what's up steve i was pro a pro chef for 15 plus years steel rods are shit thank you for the two bones yeah exactly man exactly and you know, obviously there's going to be people out there that use something, but it's just outdated. It's outdated. It's old. It doesn't make sense anymore. And here's the biggest thing for me, right? If you just answer the question of what is the best way, what is the best way to sharpen and hone your edges? It's always going to go back to stones. Stones is the best, right? Stones. That's the best. So if you had stones, you technically don't even need a rod. Right. You know, considering like, you know, not saying a rod isn't still useful, but I'm saying if you have, you know, a super fine grit stone, you could, instead of doing a bunch of passes on a rod, you could just do a few passes on a stone. That would actually be even better. Um, like, that's why, you know, you'll see me sitting there honing my edges on a stone. It works great. Uh, that's the best way. So if that is the best way, <clears throat> why would you go to a, a, a piece of metal? Right. Like that just it doesn't make sense. Like, just, just, you got to think about it. Like, if stones are the best way, wouldn't stones also be the best way to hone it? And yes, it is. Um, who said something about S45? Hinder's S45 is probably the better one to get, in my humble opinion. Um, yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard that. Jared, your 
audio output has been weak. Oh shit! I'm sorry, guys. Um, how about now? Better. Okay, hold on. So it automatically goes down. Uh, hopefully, I got it locked now. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's weird, man. It automatically drops itself back down every time. It's because I'm loud. So I'm sorry. I'll try to keep it up, but it likes to drop itself back down. It's got like a. There it goes. It just did it again. I'm not sure how to get it to where. Because that's for. That's not for the audio. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, I'll try to look into it. Bass Pro Shop has Benchmade Reptilian with D2 steel for $99. Um, that's an old model. Either that or it's a specialty or something, but the ones in D2 are like 15 years old. I don't even know. Um, the When I first got into the knife community, they were running 154 CM. They switched to S30V um, quickly after I joined the community. Uh, and that was when they had a hollow grind on the, the Benchmaker Reptilian. If it has a hollow grind, which I, you know, I know the 154 CM versions did, then I would say, yeah, it's worth it. But if not, I would say, no, just spend the extra money and get the S30V. No. Now, I will say, Benchmade has done the best D2 that I've ever tested from a production company. They do a really good... It's, as far as um, like big brand uh, uh, production companies, because technically the best was probably from Medford, but Benchmade did a really, really good job on their stuff last year. Um, I was surprised how good it did. But, you know, that's not super common with D2. So I like the way ceramic feels when you're using it, like how the steel responds to it. Right. And it's just pressure. Like when you hear people saying like, well, that's, that's for um and as an abrasive and the steel is just for for honing which they don't even understand what honing means but because honing you can use it's kind of a broad term honing right like i can hone my edge back to sharp i can hone my edge back to true you know back to true i, I you know you you can hone your edge in different ways but um but just because it's an abrasive it's a very, very fine abrasive. It'll mirror polish your edge. It is so fine. It's hardly taking anything. So the lighter the pressure you use, the less material it's going to take. Even if you push a lot of pressure, it's taking very, very little material. But because it's an abrasive, it allows it to cut in the microscopic serrations that you want on your edge bevel in order to hold and keep bite. Because... A sharp edge is dog shit without bite. Like it does, it doesn't even. It's it's just sharp. It's like a straight razor on your face, right? You wouldn't want to use that for EDC because that's going to be you. You want as little teeth as possible. Uh, so it's just you know it, it's it winds up becoming a slick edge, which can be a dangerous edge. So like I said, you know it, it goes hand in hand. You need it goes hand in hand. It goes well geometry, then you know the uh, the edge geometry, and then the bite. The edge geometry is going to be the sharpness. I sharpened a dull ass kitchen knife on the bottom of a ceramic mug yesterday and couldn't believe how well it worked. Yeah, you just got to make sure it's not glazed at the bottom. Uh, because uh, I seen somebody do a video <laughs> a couple weeks ago, and they just didn't know. It was fine. I didn't say nothing. You know, I mean, I'm saying something now, but uh, but it was a glazed mug, so it doesn't work. You know, um, so it's just funny because you want to make sure the coffee mug, because a lot of coffee mugs have a glaze on it like this, but the bottom in most cases doesn't have the glaze. They only glaze the sides, but sometimes they do glaze the bottom, and, and that one had a glazed bottom, and that won't work. Chrissy, debating Hera Mini, have an OG Hera, and the two is larger than I like, so the Mini is a better for EDC. Yeah, you got to get the size that works for you. I mean, I I tend to lean more towards the, I, I guess I'd say large, um, you know, seven to eight and a half inches or something like that. Um, I don't mind having a compact folder, but if it's going to be a compact folder, I still want it to have a, a long enough or big enough blade that I can, you know, 
do a little bit of work with it. I'm not saying it has to be big. You know, like Benchmade 940, right? Like that that type of size. Like that's perfect to me. Um, and, and you know, anything a little bit bigger, Sabenzas, but like a small Sabenza, I don't know if I could. I mean, I could carry a small Sabenza, but I wouldn't be something I'd like carry daily all the time. I'd carry something a little bit larger, just a little bit larger. Stas 23 is in the house. I gave him the belt because you guys need to go over there and check out his channel. Definitely go over there and subscribe. Give him some love. <laughs> love them stones, Neve. Hell yeah. Got a lot of stones. Uh, sup, Jared? Do you think the Veneve 80 grit is really needed for anything if you already have the 150 Veneve with the Atom 140? No, you don't need it then. No. If you've got the 140, you have you have your um your reprofiling stone then you know just switch over to the 150 because you're going to want an aggressive stone to get out those scratches because a 140 is a fucking aggressive so you you want something aggressive to get those scratches out to get you to a medium grit you're not going to want to jump from a 140 straight to like a high medium grit you know you're not going to go from 140 to 600 you're going to have to go like 140 300 then 600 now a lot of people would just start at 300 and you can do that if you don't have you can even start at 400 it just depends on the geometry you're sharpening the angle you're sharpening at and is there damages, things like that. So usually I just say start with the 140. It'll remove the steel very, very fast and get your bevel set. And then you can clean everything up with the second stone and, you know, as you move along. But no, you don't need the 80 if you have the 140 because the 80 is going to be basically like a, like a 250 grit, something like that. So, um, Yankee with another five bones. Thanks. Asking you because Hinder finally seems to be cranking out more knives lately. XM24s, Eclipse Projects, X batches, etc. Yeah, I seen that. I seen that um, they've been um, at um, USA Made Blades. So shout out to USA Made Blades. Definitely go and give him some support. I know he's not liking me right now, but I, I still, uh, you know, want to support the company, and I, I hope he does very well. And um, and yeah, so. Um, hope you, hopefully, if you guys are going to be buying some American-made knives, you go and check out USA Made Blades. Um, James K. with the two bones. Best knife for the Eclipse. What? Best knife for the... <laughs> are we talking about like an actual Eclipse? Like, like the moon? What's the best knife for that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got me there. I feel like you just found a question like he's not going to be able to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Why does my LC 200 N seem to have more bite at 1000 than 600? Well, some, some steels do well with finer grits. Like it depends on the steel and also the angle is going to be important. Like say if you took a, a, a knife at, let's say it's LC 200 N and you took it at um, 22 degrees per side. And then you took a nut at 600 grit. And then you took another one at 15 degrees per side at 1000 grit. That 1000 grit is going to be like absolutely sharper and have more bite in every way. It's just geometry. So your angle is going to be the most important part. It's the most important part with everything is geometry, um, whether it's your edge or blade geometry. So, um, but yeah, you got to figure it out. Um, you know, also depending on the heat treatment that can, that plays a huge part. Like you, I remember when I first started sharpening, I didn't realize like how big of a difference the heat treatment makes with sharpening. Um, and not even like, just like the deburring part, but like how the edge can turn out at what grit and also how it's going to do, because some edges, you know, they might come out just fine, but you'll notice very, very quickly that they will get, they'll get slick as soon as you start using them, even though that steel could do really well with that grit. So you do got to, you know, play around with it and see um, how it does. I wouldn't take LC 200 I mean, you can, it depends. I, I've taken it up to polishes. I've never tested it as far as how or which one it does better with, um, with medium grit or polished. But, uh, but yeah, just test it out. See how it does. Put it, if you want to do a mirror, if you want to go really fine, you can. But if you stick in the 600 to 1200 range, you're in a safe range for all steels. <laughs> Um, I've learned all my sharpening techniques from you, Jared. Thanks, man, for everything. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, that that uh, feels awesome, man. 
Uh, Kaleidoscope, what's up, brother? Been a member for four months. Got to put some grails on that wood display. Yeah, I, 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 I'm meaning to move it. So I actually just redid the, um, and you guys will see it very soon. I just redid the sharpening, um, I guess you call it sharpening studio. I don't know what the hell you call it. Um, but I set it up. It's completely different now. Not completely different, but I moved the tables around, moving the camera around. So everything's going to look a lot different. Um, and I'm trying to do that in here too. I want to do it with both of them. Um, and it, I want to make this all completely different. I usually do that once a year, you know, buy a new desk, buy a new something. And my plan is, is to move this to a safer place because when the knives are up there, I'm always just scared they're going to fall into my foot. Um, and you know, <laughs> PTSD, uh, John, thank you, man. Thank you for the 15 bones. Worked at a slaughterhouse that dropped 2,500 heads a shift. All the old school workers use ceramic or a diamond rod if they had them. Bang. Hell yeah. That's awesome. And that's exactly what they should be using. Exactly. You know, a diamond or a ceramic or both right? Both, both is probably the best, but you know, if you just have one, um, both of them work great. Now a diamond, if you're just trying to hone, right, you're just going to go super, super light. You're not going to put any pressure. And I mean, like if you're sorry, not just, if you're just trying to realign the teeth, you're just going to go really, really gentle, but in the process of realigning the teeth, it's going to add more or remove any loose ones. That's what's cool about an abrasive you know, it'll, it'll get rid of any loose little microscopic teeth that are going to break off anyways. Um, I see we have five gifts. I got to catch up. Um, call this has been a member for five months, five months of nothing but nice. Gotta love it. Low country hillbilly with the 10 bones. What's up J red, the, and unite peoples just finished cooking a fresh South Carolina shrimp and cream laguine. Uh, <laughs> within what Boston Pecorino Romano shred and garden fresh parsley. Bang. That sounds fucking delicious, man. You got me hungry now. Um, I love me some good shrimpies. I call them crimpies. Every time we're at like a restaurant or something, I see the shrimps. I'm like, Oh shit. I gotta get me some crimpies. Um, uh, in my opinion, be honest one second. I got a package from Kaiser. Four knives to check out on my friend's behalf. Two I bought. I want to keep all six. So bad. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, Riet, what, which one is the best knife company? Riet's the better one, um, but it depends on your price range. Like, obviously, you know, Riet's more expensive. So Riet is better in most ways. Um, like tolerances, fit, finish, consistency across the board, their detents. Um, their capabilities, but we just came a long way. We, you know, they're stepping, they're doing a pretty damn good job. They're very, they're in a very close second position. I would put them like, basically like I'd put them in maybe one or two other companies right there, right behind Riet. Uh, but Riet's definitely the one that the majority of companies or custom knife makers would rather go to, to get their designs done. Um, and they 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 do work with you more on steels and heat treatment. Like, like we knife goes very difficult to deal with with um switching steels, doing steels that they don't you know use and things like that. And they definitely don't like to even play with the heat treatment. So they have like their protocols, and that's what they want to do. Re out of work with you. They, they, what do you want? You know, it's basically what it is. And if you want something extreme, they're gonna say, okay, well, it's gonna cost more. Which cool, you know. Sometimes it becomes a limit where it's like, okay, I, I you know, that's probably going to cost too much. People aren't going to fall for and not fall for it, but people aren't going to buy that. So, you know, stick with it a little bit lower, but, you know, still in a good range. Like that's kind of what I did with the K390 that we got coming soon. But the shitty part is, is that they, uh, the coated blades, the DLC ones are, are losing two points. So, and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, Round pin electrical connector, files, cleaner work, and a pinch on serrated. Uh, James K gifted five Neves Knives memberships. Shout out to James K. Uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Uh, we definitely love to see new members. And uh, uh, yeah, we're going to have a, a really good bang gang live on the next one, um, which is not tomorrow, but it'll be next Sunday. We will do a, a giveaway and a live sharpening. Now, 
I do have a knife right now that I'm supposed to give to you guys. I don't know if we're going to do it right now, though. What Stroppy compound is all around the best? My favorite is Stroppy stuff right now. You can find it. Needs Knife Co. Um, actually, I didn't even link any of the links in the description. Let me do that real quick. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can go to Neve Knife Co. and get strappy stuff. That's what I recommend right now. That's my favorite. Um, I also really like Gunny Juice. Gunny Juice is, is you know, just as good uh, or, you know, damn near just as good. I would say that the reason why I think the other stuff is just a little bit better is because, one, it's color-coordinated. That might not matter to you, but it is, which for me that's a that's a plus because i have multiple different straps you know and because i run a channel you know so you know i test different things so you know having um that is important to me but the next thing is is the concentration i do think the concentration is a little bit better i just linked it down in the description for you guys so if you want to um get some just hit the top link um in the description and uh you'll see uh at the top of the bar once you hit the link you know on the neve knife site you'll see uh stroppy stuff but yeah that stuff it spreads so easily it's the to me the ease like the other day the other day i took out my 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 veneve black which is a a diamond compound that's so aggressive it's like sandpaper like when you put it on the leather when you go to put your knife across it it get scratched a shit like it, you can hear that's what it sounds like i've never had a stropping compound so damn aggressive so i got it but i got it i put or sorry i got it and i put it on a leather strop on purpose because i wanted that that super aggressive stuff fucking two days later the shit is still like like drying like it, it's dry but it's not like it, it's weird it's like you have to put such a thin layer you got to heat it up you got to you know let it sit there and air dry for sometimes a week what it seems like because you put your knife across it like you'll see the the paste or whatever getting on the blade with the shroppy stuff and you don't get none of that not i mean unless if you put it on and start doing it right away and it doesn't have time to dry but it only needs like 30 seconds maybe 60 seconds and that's a huge difference because man i don't want when i'm ready to strap i'm not trying to wait till tomorrow I want to stop right now. I, I ain't got patience, man. No patience at all. Even and Jared, at Southern Edge's site, there are a bunch of hinders just sitting there. I don't know what you think of Southern Edge, though. I don't know them. I don't even know the company you're referring to. I, maybe I do, and it's just not um, coming to my my brains. Um, I do have a bad memory for names. So, Peter Flanagan with the five bones. While talking about food. Got a brisket on the smoker for tomorrow. That's fire. That is fire. I had a, um, what was it? It was like a brisket sandwich the other day. It was, uh, it was so good. It was so damn good. It had a couple different other meats on there. So it wasn't just that. Does Laren plan on topping Magna Cut? Good question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure he's going to probably even maybe even just to figure out a way to evolve it. You know, that's what a lot of companies do. They take the steel that they already did and they'll tweak it a little bit more. Um, I bought the re at PLXT. Should be seeing it sometime soon. Yeah, that's a cool one. It's very similar to this new um, anchor lock that uh, that Vosteed is doing. I posted the video earlier today that that's pretty cool man that locking system is very good it one creates a great detent two it, it i didn't even realize it till after i was done with my video but there's um and i took it apart and everything i took the fucking knife apart and i still didn't notice this it has a magnet inside the button or, or something like that to prevent it from popping out so it's always pressed in see that like even when you press it in when it pops back out, it doesn't like pop out more. So it stays recessed in. So you're less likely to hit it with your finger or anything. Um, but super strong lock. Very tough. I seen uh, Lefty fucking uh, did some, you know, light batoning, but some batoning on it. By the way, guys, the vision video is all done. It's being edited now. Hopefully you guys will be seeing it on Monday. 
we put some work on those knives and I did some work on them. So that's going to be an awesome video. We did an edge retention test. So I've already got the edge retention test. I'm not telling you guys the numbers. So you guys are going to have to watch the video. We tested the scales. We tested, we tested the locks. We tested fucking everything. So we're going to see what did the best. Was it the Wii knife go, the Civivi vision or the Damascus one? So we tested the Nitro V 20 CV and Damascus head to head. I got a bottle yesterday. Need to overnight that junk. I'm in need. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like when you when you need it, you need it, right? It's like I want it now. What's that? Uh, what was that? Um, is it JG Wentworth or something? I want it now. Um, if you are any one of those Jewish 28 members of Biden's cabinet, you can be watching Neves Knives live to be researching what is the best blade to cut up the constitution and bill of rights live right now. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, it's not funny. I, I know what you're doing there, but, um, but yeah, I wish I could donate some memberships tonight. Like I usually do, but I was dumb and made two house payments. Damn, no money to spend for a while. And that means no new knives. Urgh. I'm on the edge. Oh man. I'm sorry to hear that you, uh, double paid on rent. I don't know how that happens, but, uh, it's all right, man. There's there's always uh there's always next month. Always next month. You have another month, man. That's what's important, right? Another hopefully you got another month. <laughs> Let's pray about it. Um uh, I've been using OCD for EDC Slickamall. Yeah, Slickamall is great. I like that's my favorite stuff for washers. It works on bearings too, but it works very good on washers. Um, you know, it works really good on bearings too. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's like a, um, I got some right here, actually. Um, it's like, it's like a, a, a grease oil mix kind of, um, in a way I need more slick them all. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I wound up getting this one. I lost my first tube. Still haven't found it. I don't know what the hell I did with it. I've been stuck for a couple of weeks. I have no idea what knife I want next. <sighs> That's a tough one. I, I, that's a tough one because there's a lot of good shit out there right now, man. A lot of good shit. I'll tell you what, man. This Archer is fire, but yeah, you know, it is expansive. The tactile Archer, what a gorgeous knife! And look at this micro milling, man. I mean, just a damn killer job. And then look at this thing. Watch this. Thing. This thing is a damn guillotine. Detent is like crispy good. Like you would think that flipper tab, the way it's angled, that it's not that it's not gonna have like a lot of leverage. The detent is just so good on it that yeah, it pops. Um, but that that's that's definitely a good one. And they have a new knife dropping. I'm gonna be able to post a video on it in four days, guys. Four days we will see the coup the uh Koopa Kadra or whatever. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, from tactile. So we got that one coming too. Uh, how do you store strop or plates? Protection from dog hair and shit, Ziploc, or wrap it in newspaper good? So, stroppy stuff actually sends strops in a, um, it's like a cloth bag. I sometimes store them there. Me, I just stack them. I just stack them up and they just sit there. But I could, and sometimes I do, put them inside, back inside the sleeve. Uh, but yeah, you could Ziploc it. You could um, wrap it. Yeah, whatever. Um, or uh, probably even best get a case or um, uh, a, not a rubber made, but a, um, like one of those plastic food containers. You know, just get a big one, store it in there. Jared, do you have the new knife from Tactile? I do. I do. Yes, I do. I have a couple of them, but uh, um, I do definitely have to. Um, I, I can't talk about it, but, uh, but yeah, it, I, there's one little issue. It's a pretty big one, but, but they're dealing with it. They already know they've already said that they're handling it. And, um, and it's nothing like, it's just the jimping. That's it. I, I, I'm not, I'll, you guys will hear about it on, um, in just a few days, but, uh, yeah, it's a badass knife, man. And it, it's, aluminum so it's they're able to keep the price down a little bit lower i know some people are like 250 bucks for aluminum and magnet cut i know that's the way people are thinking but one it's a snack design 
with the snack slack. So he's got to get his fucking cut, right? As he should. So you got to consider that. You got to consider Tactile as a small company. Uh, so, you know, because I know, yes, you can get aluminum and magna cut from other companies for much less, for like around 150, 160 bucks, USA made. So, you know, that one is, you know, about $100 more, but you are getting one, a superior heat treatment, in my opinion, because tactile, since they upped it to 6364, that stuff's really good. Uh, and I've, I already sharpened this one and it, it came out really, really nice. And so far, like I said, tactile's magna cut has done, uh, I'm pretty sure the best so far, as far as from production companies. Um, I want to test, um, a Chris Reeves, man. I want to do an edge retention test on his stuff. Um, just bought this $34 petrified Terra. Looks like, looks a lot like the original work tough nomad EDC. I'm a sucker for a contoured handle and rounded spear point. I, I'm a sucker for a spear point too. Riddle me this. How the hell did a CRKT redemption in China da, when gravity knives are prohibited in China? Da? Well, so they're they're prohibited. Knives are prohibited in China except for in the city that they make them. So there's one city that's literally that makes 80% of all the knives on the planet is made in this one city. Um, so that is where they are allowed to have and carry knives. I don't think they're allowed to like carry them to like the grocery store and stuff, but because they're working in a city just made for knives, they're allowed to have them. So, but yeah, it's kind of fucking weird, right? It's kind of weird. Like, you know, you guys can't even buy these, but you, you know, you're making them and selling them to us. Uh, but man, you know, you can say that about a lot of shit, man. It's like every package you get, man, every package you get, like today I've got, um, a couple packages and it's just like little stuff. Like I got this, this mat, um, I was trying to, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but it's, um, I try to get mats for my tables that I can film on that are scratch and poke proof, or that at least have healing properties to the best, you know, to the best of its ability, but they're difficult to find or expensive but everyone I get comes, you know, made in China, made in China, all the boxes, made in China, everything. And, uh, you know, and you, you try to find things, you know, made in the USA and it's just impossible, which I hate, man. I hate that. Uh, I'm on the edge, gifted one needs nice membership. Hey, man, thank you. You didn't have to do that, but I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. House payments are important. They definitely are. You definitely don't want to miss those. <laughs> You definitely don't want to miss those. What's up, Kyle? Shout out to Kyle Coonley. Uh, Bluetooth Blades just get the five Neves Knives memberships. Thank you, man. You guys are coming in hot today. What was it, payday for everybody? You guys are awesome, man. Thank you guys for all the donations. Uh, it's a pretty good live so far. <laughs> it's the best for Spidey's. Big ups to OCD. That Archer is killer with the 80 Camp Carbon. But it's almost 700. Whew, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> that's a tough one. I don't know if I can sell that. Apparently, the supposed no play OTF came too early, and I don't know how I feel about it. The part because it came too early? Or, <laughs> or what? Oh, man, it's hilarious. Um, Blade Walker's been a member for three months. What's up? I'm here for the party. Well, welcome, man. Welcome to the party. I have some older but goodies knives available. Most are like new in box, Spider Crow Shaman with S30V blade and Met and Boss Carpenter Scales, 310 ship Spider Crow Smock with custom smock biohazard scales, 350 ship. So if you guys are check wanting to check out any knives, go check out um Alice over on Instagram. Um uh Whoever can link the, the page if they want, if they're able to, um, in the chat so people can just run over there. Or you can just go type that name in right there and you'll find her on Instagram. Hey, guys, sorry if I missed or go to their site. I think she she has a site, too. Hey, guys, sorry if I missed any shout outs. Oh, wait, but she wouldn't be selling her knives on the site. So never mind. Um, hey, guys, sorry if I missed any shout outs. Doing terrible job of multitasking. 
Um, no problem, man. Thank you. I appreciate you being here either way. Um, I'm not much of a multitasker myself. I mean, I am, but only for certain things like working, stuff like that. Like I'm great at it, but like I can't read and listen at the same time. Um, I can't write and like Carol will be talking sometimes for like three minutes and I ain't heard a damn word she said. Not one fucking word. I couldn't have told you what what nothing came out of her mouth, you know, and, and she's been talking to me and I'm just, at, you know, because I'm listening to something and she can be right next to me. And it's just like it's I don't know. It's weird. That's just the way my brain works. Um, I'm ready for the rock wall XL. That would be dope. That's a good idea, too. I would love to see that. I would love to see them do that with a hollow grind. That would be dope. That with a hollow grind. Whew. Um, you guys are the best. Quick tips, very helpful. Um, not a problem, Bob. Thank you for joining. Uh, that's reasonable for that new tactile, regardless of materials. Like you said, you're getting a bona fide steel. And you know, and you are getting the materials right in the machining, the fit, finish, tolerance. I mean, this thing is it's like it's fit very, very well. Like everything about it is is done exceptionally well, except for one thing and that's the plunge grind plunge grind and sharpening tool is my biggest complaint on the night did they raise the hoag deca magnet cuts price i bought it around a year ago i don't know it was like 134 for the frn and then it was like 150 160 for the 20 cv and g10 i think uh probably just depends on which one you get but i don't know china sells guns here too are you sure I didn't know that. I didn't even know they made guns at all. Huh. Uh, France has a similar problem. Those ugly open L knives. Those knives are, wait, those knives that are as un, uh, unintimidating as possible are illegal in France. So strange. Yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Have you checked out the Dead Wrecking Ridgeback yet? I bought a 3V version from Crispy Donut Community. I have not checked that out yet, but I definitely would love to. It's very difficult to find American. It, just certain things you can, though. There's a lot of things you actually can. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more, but in many cases, you're getting better quality. Sometimes not, but a lot, you know, sometimes you are, but you are supporting. The people in your country, keeping the money in your country, so on and so on and so on. So there's more benefits to it. Um, that is how China is, man. They have districts that do certain things. Uh, Shenzhen is where most all consumer electronics are made and so on, right? They have like, like, yeah, like, like places like specifically designed and that's why they can all use each other and you know, I'm not sure if they all do, but I'm sure they can, you know, use sometimes, you know, each other's stuff and, you know, and help, you know, and basically help each other out to some extent. Jared, I need advice. The supposed no play OTF came early and I don't know how I already read that one. What happened? Am I backed up? Um, Bluetooth, better member for 14 months. Hit that like, you scurvy dows. Yes, please, please smack that like button. Uh, is there going to be a live where Kara joins us to interject with raccoon stories and the science behind our solar panel? I don't know. I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. Uh, multitask. I can't even walk and chew gum at the same time. You just stop, chew, walk. Stop, chew, walk. <laughs> what do you think about mech force knives? I've never really had any. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I mean, let, I'll pull them up really quick <clears throat> because um, I'm having trouble thinking of them. But I know... I know who they are. I just don't think I've ever tried them. So, oh, go. Okay. So, I might have tried one at Belayed Show, but my memory can't remember how good it or bad it was. Um, but, yeah, they look badass. Yeah, I... I um. I can't remember if I tried one at Blade Show or not. 395, 410. What is that? What kind of handle? Me? Oh, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Uh, we have a drop point harpoon American Tonto with a dual grind and a fuller with 80s fat carbon fiber, M390 steel. Wonder what the HRC is. Wonder who did it. Doesn't say, does it? 
where are these made? That's the question. Uh, but yeah, pretty damn cool. All right, I'm going to try catching up because I know I am backed up. Um, shout out to John Evans. Go and check out his channel. I see he's in the house. Uh, I just passed his name, and now I can't even find it to pull his name up. Idiot. There he is. Shout out to John Evans. Definitely go and give his channel a look as well. Um, he's got a lot of cool knives. Crazy Roach has been a member for four months. Four months. Hell yeah. Cheers. Too many more. Let's go. Let's do it. I really wish ZT would uh, make a comeback. I do too. I felt I have, I'm very optimistic because that Bel Air, you know, has kind of pushed me on their side. <laughs> they, they've kind of tugged at my heartstrings, I guess, uh, because they find, because I was the one bitching about it, right? I was bitching about it for, uh, you guys know, however long, like since they discontinued the, the knockout. You know, I basically was saying, like, it's their responsibility to give us an affordable USA-made manual knife. And I say responsibility just because they've always done it, right? And I personally would feel like it was my responsibility if I was in their shoes. So I'm not speaking for them. I'm not saying actually is. I'm just saying what I would feel like if I was the company that always did do that. And then now there isn't one in existence. There's not one that's available to nobody in the USA. Nobody can get one. So now they didn't wind up hitting the mark that I was talking about, which was around a hundred dollars, but you know, the, the around 150, I'm just happy that they did a manual one. So, um, I'm hoping that we do see a lot more to come from them, but yes, I would love to see them do some badass ZT knives, uh, for sure. Scott, thank you for the five bones. These Atomas ain't playing. Using the 140 to start off a few kitchen knives. Yeah, they're, they're the 140, man, that fucker's, they, well, the Atomas, period, because they use a diamond cluster system. So most diamond plates are like this, where it's a, a thin layer of diamonds across the surface, and they're all just sprinkled on that. Atoma takes little clusters of diamonds. So instead of just being a thin layer spread across, it's a little piles of diamonds. And they're like little tiny, like, um, you know, domes, basically. And yeah, it makes it to where they, they fucking cut. They cut fast. They make light work out of, um, you know, stuff that would normally take you a long time. If you couldn't get a USA-made knife, what's the next best country? Uh, Taiwan. I would say Taiwan. Italy's pretty good, but Italy's steels are usually soft. They have a couple steels that they run pretty good, but Italy's good. Uh, Taiwan is probably my favorite next to USA. China, I mean, you can go to China. Uh, China has probably the best knives as far as for the value. USA has the best knives, but China has the best knives for the money. So if you're looking for the best knife under $300, you'll probably find it there. Right, if you're looking for the best knife under a hundred, one hundred percent, it's coming from there. You you can't even find a great quality USA made knife under a hundred dollars, except for a couple assisted knives from Kershaw. Most USA made knives, and I know people are going to scream the Buck One Ten, the Buck One Ten. Modern knives, guys. Modern. John Evans has been a member for twenty five months. Shout out to John. Twenty five months. It's starting to make me feel old. Kai is probably just selling millions of Kershaws. They definitely are doing that. Uh, but, you know, hopefully they, because I, I, I agree. I think they probably looked at their business and said, okay, Kershaw makes this much money and ZT makes this much money, right? And they're like, we should invest more into this. I understand that from a business aspect, but. I think they, the, you know, I, we're being greedy because, you know, we want them to do the things that, that we always love to see them do, but maybe it didn't go well for them. It obviously didn't, right? Because they would repeat it. We tend to repeat what works. And, and I think that they tried doing new things, which I think they shot themselves in the foot. And I'm just speculating here. 
I think they came out with some new designs because people were saying, like, is at first, like, they were making the big, big knives, right? Then people were, like, kind of like, we want slicey knives. So they tried to make some smaller knives and it backfired on them. And then everybody was like, we want the big knives. So then they were probably like, these motherfuckers aren't happy with nothing. Well, then they made a couple other models. And just so happens that during that time, people were very, 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 very critical over USA made knives. Uh, to an extent that I'm not sure it was warranted uh, because it wasn't like about like was there something wrong with the knife or anything like that. It was like literally just like how they felt about it. And, you know, you know, it, that probably hurt them in some way. And not saying they didn't, you know, do anything wrong, because I do think that for a while they were out of touch. And I still think they are. I still think to some extent they're removed and out of touch from what knife people want. Now, granted, if they're trying to sell to big box stores, then, of course, that's going to be a different market. But if you want to get in which I do think that the knife community and the size of people that are starting to become knowledgeable about knives is only going to continue to get it bigger. Big box stores is is coming to an end. And I don't mean the stores are coming to an end. I'm saying the thought of going and buying a pocket knife from a big box store for $35 that you could get for $15 is about done. People are not going to be doing it much longer. People are going to start realizing they're going to start saying like, what? Like, is they're going to watch their people are going to watch YouTube, YouTube videos. You can look up anything, anything you like, look it up. You'll find a video of somebody telling you what it's like. And that's what's going to start happening is more and more people are going to see videos and then they're not going to just go into a store and purchase a knife unless if, you know, they're just like, you know, getting a work knife or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do think the future is people ordering knives. So I think it's in their best interest to, to appeal to the audience that's going to be showing it. And I don't mean like appeal to me. I just mean appeal to the, the knife market. LCV. Oh, I don't know why I gave you a bell. Damn it, I gave you a damn, but you guys just got a free bell. Um, LCV uh, Blades Edge says, Yo, Jared, what kind of budget knives do you have on your site for sale that you've really been wanting to get rid of? I'm in the market for one. Let's take a look. I'll tell you exactly which ones are good and which ones I would avoid. Most of the ones on there are, are really good because I try to only have knives i really recommend and i want to get usa made knives on there i've been trying trying i think we're gonna have some on there very soon um we definitely have my knife designs coming soon okay so let's just go shop all oh, we definitely have the jackals but that's not budget so um this guy is pretty cool. The Storm Owl, that's actually really good. Okay, so right here, I would say, oh, man, it's sold out. Okay, I was going to say the Praxis, but this guy right here, the Chevalier and the Praxis is what I was going to say, is fire. This is the aluminum handle one, which, in my opinion, is way better than the Micarta one. Um, man, if we had some, some of these visions, that'd be really dope. Yeah, we're sold out of a lot of things. This guy's cool. The Am I Right? It's big, though. So just know that this is a large knife. So I don't know what size knife you're looking for. Cubits. The Civiti Cubit. That, that, I highly recommend the Cubit. If you haven't seen, go watch my full review on the Civiti Cubit, where I did the Wii Cubit and the Civiti Cubit head-to-head. -head, and I did the edge retention test and all the other good stuff. Similar to the uh, the 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 test you're going to see here on Monday, but the Civivi Cuba is definitely one I would recommend. The Chevalier, um, let's see here, yeah, that's that's uh, probably about it of budget knives. Oh no, oh shit, right here the sent the Sentinel. <clears throat> this is a banger. I personally like it. The only problem is is the blade seals K110. Not that that's bad, but it, it's it's basically D2. But it's a great, great knife. Oh, the Sokoki. I didn't even realize we had any of those. This is banger. This is probably my favorite right here. I freaking, why won't it pop? I love, love, love this knife. This is the big version. I got it actually right here. It's a gravity knife. So I highly recommend this one. So any of the four or five that I mentioned from this Elementum, let me pull this down. 
14C28N, deep hollow ground, spear point blade, very neutral ergonomics, nice large knife while being nice and slim, very lightweight, super easy to carry. It's a good looking knife too. Um, then the, the, um, the Chevalier and the Cubit. One of those three is what I would go with. You can't go wrong with any one of those three. Echo! Thank you, man. Thank you for becoming a member. I do appreciate you join him, man. Uh, not tomorrow, but next Sunday, we will have the members giveaway and live sharpening. Emerson's were my first premium promos. Let me uh, catch up. I see I'm backed, backed up. So if I miss something, just rewrite it. I do appreciate it. I'm just trying to jump. You should love the strange fella. You guys are talking shit. Damn, I am way backed up. Holy cow, guys. I'm sorry. All right. Strongly considering buying a Neves knife and getting it shipped all the way to Australia. Has to, damn it, has to come with a love letter and a hint of spray of his number one panty dropper cologne of the month though so one problem there um i wish i could do that for you but i don't have them here i don't have none of those knives here those knives are in las vegas at a different location i have a partner that i work with and he does all the shipping so he deals with everything on the store and all of that um and you know so i don't I don't get to ship them to you. Sometimes I do, because sometimes I'll have them here and then I'll do it, but it's very rare. It's very rare that I have them. Um, but uh, but yeah, we do have a banger panty drop and fragrance we're going to be checking out here in just a few moments, though. So really, we have a couple really good ones. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I um, I wish you would. I wish you would buy, buy one of them. Um, like I said, we do have my own knife designs coming soon. Winston Cabretti. Shout out to Winston Cabretti. He became a member. Shout out to you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the support. Tactile rock wall or the Wii 601. What's the 601? I'll always, if you're asking me USA made versus, okay, so this is the new one that's coming. I got one. I guess got it behind me. Um, is it? Yeah, this is the new one coming, right? Anyways, um, yeah, I, I'm going to always recommend if you ask me between USA or China, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, um, USA, but I will say for the money 297, you're getting, you're probably going to get, you know, a little bit better of a knife in this case. Um, but they're both really, really good. The rock walls. Awesome. <laughs> man. If you have the money, man, the fucking archers where it's at, this thing is fucking tits. But, you know, that's, you know, it's, if you look at this though, right, both of these have a lot of similarities. This is like 350 and this is five something. So, you know, you just got to put that into consideration. But yeah, man, I, uh, I think both, both of those knives are good. I do have the new Wii one behind me, the 10th anniversary knife. Been a member for 12 months. It's been a great year. I've learned a lot. Thank you, man, for becoming for being a member for so long. Hey, what's up, Shane? I can vouch for Jared's cologne recommendations. Got me in deep shit. I appreciate that. And uh yeah, they can definitely get you in some trouble. Um, the 601 is the new, yes, the new anniversary. That's what I thought. I have I have it behind me. The thing is, I haven't I've checked them out, but I don't think I can post a video for like 10 days or something like that. So I haven't even really done much with them. Um, I have had, I have so much shit going on right now that it just hasn't been the priority since it's so far away. Um, but I will be reviewing it very, very soon. Um, right now we just got done with the, the vision test and we did three tests of everything. So three cut tests, three uh, block tests, three everything tests. And uh, it's a good video. You guys are going to love it. Uh, what's up, Neves? Glad I caught the stream. Hope you're doing good, man. Just bought the Microtech um, Scarab 2 Gen 3 in the natural clear finish. I love it. Hell yeah. Shane, don't you mean 
got you out of smelling like shit. That's exactly what he meant. Um, did you guys already talk about Voss Deeds and the Knife on Kickstarter? I did a video on it earlier. But yeah, I talked about it um a little while ago. I dropped this morning. I ordered two of them. Hell yeah. Yeah, I um I posted a video on it earlier. It's a super good lock. It, it's very innovative. It's um definitely unique. And it seems that it's nice and strong. Seems like a tough lock because the way the mechanism works is it has multiple points of contact. And it allows it to be a regular detent. So phenomenal reverse thumb flick. And, you know, basically every bit of the action is great. And because that button's recessed, you know, you don't have to worry about accidentally bumping it. But yeah, Elmex steel, aluminum handles. It's pretty dope. I like it. Um, I think that this thing has, sorry, the lock has a ton of potential meaning it's really good. And I think that they're going to wind up using it on a lot of knives moving forward. Um, I think that they could definitely put that into a lot of, um, um, a lot of different knives. I have, wait, which one was this? I want to, um, talk about the momentum really quick. Oh no, wrong one. Oh, you know, we'll pull that one up so we can fuck it. So really quick, I'm going to show you guys a couple knives and then uh, we'll get to the frag of the day. But, man, this is one I really, really like. So you guys know I freaking love the Momentum. Koopy Momentum. This one's been a beater. So this one's been abused a lot. Uh, and it has amazing action. I have a brand new one still in the package. I have a few of these. Uh, but very good ergonomics. You can turn around and cut straps. Gas station knife fighting grip. Balance is really good. Action is stupid. Perfect front flipper. Um, great thumb studs, great placement, great blade shape. Then now they have it in a premium version. And look at that, the lock bar cutouts on the inside. Man, Kubi has been listening. This thing is so snappy, man. Look at that front flipper. That jimping is so, so good. They did the perfect jimping on there. Um, this one is M390. With micro mill titanium scales. Yeah, this is a good one, man. I think this is my favorite Kubi right now. I know I just recently said that about the Royal, but that was before this dropped. And the clip on this is beautiful. Beautiful clip. This is another new one they did that's uh, pretty damn cool. Um, it has a good aesthetic to it. It's a good looking knife. Great front flipper. Very snappy. Great jimping good ergonomics uh and yeah it's just done extremely well as well sharp and control plunge grind needs some work though but i still like the momentum way better look at those i just man, i even like the blue accents man look at that it's cool looks damn good it's just a good looking knife but yeah, they have a bunch of good ones in uh, the Momentum. If you're looking for a great budget knife, the Momentum's a good one. I thought I was a little crazy buying doubles of knives to carry one and keep one mint. Glad to hear other people do the same thing. I got a few like that. I definitely do. Because I, I what I'll do is I'll think that, you know, like, it's like you want one that that is good and then you also want to use it but then you're like you, you're afraid to scratch it and fuck it up not that i'm really scared of scratching and fucking it up but if i got an extra one i'll fuck it and you know i'll put the work on these things because i also do a lot of testing and stuff so i want knives that i like a lot to go through the most do you know what i mean like It'd be stupid for me if I loved a knife so much that I recommend it constantly, but I, I'm not constantly using it and, you know, testing it and abusing it and putting it through its paces. Um, the, and the, the, those are also the reasons why I wind up loving a knife, because once I have put it through its paces, you know, like this one, I've had this since this model came out. Right. So this thing's been sharpened probably 12 times. I don't even know. Maybe not that many, like 10 times. Um, and it's just an amazing knife, man. It's been through hell, but it's still kicking ass. Um, Jared, the ankle says it uses magnets. Yes, I, I actually said that uh, a little while ago. 
What do they do? So the, all it is is the magnets just hold the button recess. So it's not doing anything for the locking mechanism. The locking mechanism is a leaf arm. Watch my video. I just posted a little while ago. I, I break the knife down and I show it. But the, the button recesses in or this way recesses in and the magnets are holding it recessed so it can't pop out basically. All right. Let's check out the fragrance. So, um, I want to see that too, Nick. I can't wait to see what they're going to do. Do you have the new 10th anniversary Elementum? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, I think I do. Pretty sure. Fragrance. So, today we are doing a sweet fragrance. Well, actually, we have a sweet, a masculine, and a uh, a sweet spicy. So, we have a little bit of everything. It's a, we have a tobacco fragrance. We got a spicy fragrance. And then we got just a banger fragrance. But the first one we're going to talk about is my all-time favorite sweet fragrance. There's one problem, though. It is discontinued. However, there are so many bottles available still. You can buy it right now without a shadow of a doubt. This is my second bottle of 1 million Lucky. I can't tell you how much I recommend this. This is one of the, the most beautiful smelling fragrances oh my god it's so gorgeous this is a fucking badass fragrance to me i've tried most of one million's fragrances this is by far my favorite no comparison i could throw all the rest of them in the garbage as long as i have this one uh but that's me you know a lot of other people say they like certain ones more than others look at how much i have left in my bottle this is my second bottle my second bottle and i'm already down to here i gotta get a new one and i'm definitely gonna get a new one I will all, I'll try to ha always have this when it, it runs out because it's discontinued. I'm sure another company will come out and, you know, make it like a, because there's knockoffs and stuff like that. But anyways, this is just such a beautiful fragrance. It's I'll, I'll pull up the, the thing. It's a sweet kind of like a, a sh I want to say like a sugary scent, but don't take it like a feminine female scent. It's definitely not like a crazy masculine scent. Um, it is more um, unisex, but this to me is the best sweet fragrance for men. And I'm going to show it to you right now. It is such a uh, such a good fragrance. So you see, we got woody, sweet, nutty, honey, fruity, citrus, ozonic, amber, and floral. So the nutty, honey, and fruity, sweet, and woody is everything. That's what you get. I would say the bottom four, the citrus, ozonic, amber, and floral, maybe a little bit of the floral, but I doubt it. This whole top part is where it's at, and it is just amazing. The top notes are plum, grapefruit, bergamot, middle notes are hazelnut, honey, cedar, cashmere wood, orange blossom, and jasmine. Base notes are amberwood, patchouli, oak moss, and vetiver. Yeah, you definitely get the honey. You definitely get the hazelnut. You definitely get the, the plum and the grapefruit, the cashmere wood. It is amazing. And you see, it's good for all seasons. They're saying, you know, for the summer, it's okay, but it's better for all the other seasons. And they're saying like the hot, hot summer, right? As you see, it's good all year round. Don't, don't even, it's good year all, all year round. It's a beautiful scent. Anybody who has tried 1 million lucky, exactly, Pete. Anybody who's tried 1 million lucky will absolutely love it. it it's just so good. It's got a plum note. Yes, it, the top note is the plum. And, oh, it's so good, man. It's such a good fragrance. It's literally like, it's powerful. It's sweet yet inviting. It, it's a fragrance that when girls smell it, they they usually are like turned on right away. And I don't mean like turned on like jumping your dick, but they're they're turned on like like they they want to smell more. They want to get close. They want to find out what it is. They like it. They they start wanting to hug you. Uh, but it lingers, so you will have a sillage. So like when you walk by, they'll catch that scent. And since it is such a um. A, a good sweet fragrance so it's not like a sweet fragrance over the top it's not like a sweet fragrance that 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 uh that bites you it, it's a, a good like uh pleasing sweet fragrance so because of that it's it, you know like i said it makes it to where when you smell it you start looking for it 
the fuck is that? You know, kind of like, and I'm not saying it smells like this, but it's kind of like, you know, like you ever been like to a mall or something and then you smell like the Cinnabon store. I'm not saying it smells anything like that. So don't take that. But I'm just saying, you know, when you smell it, you start looking for it. Like you got to find it. Like, oh, even though you can smell it, you know, it's nearby. Uh, it's kind of like that. But yeah, this is one that definitely will separate you out of the crowd in a good way. And everybody's going to love it. Jim Miller with the 10 bones. Hi, Jay and friends. Too tired to hang around. Yard work sucks, man. That sucks, man. But you know what? Hard work or sorry. Yard work is hard work, which is always a good thing. Thank you, Jim. And yeah, man, um, you definitely got to put that work in, don't you? All right. So the next one um, is my favorite Savage. This is one of the best men's fragrances. And I say that meaning mass appealing, right? So the mass amount of men will, if I gave you all my fragrances, I would bet money on like three or four of my fragrances that, that you would, you would take and you would want. And this is absolutely one of those. This is one that you would try and you would be like, okay, that's what I want. I mean, it is so such a good men's fragrance. This smells like a masculine man. It has um, a it's a blue scent, so it does have like a a fresh uh, shower gel scent, but it's very woody. It's very dense. It's got a hint of spice, um, but but it's got. Um, let's just look it up really quick. Um. Only problem is, man, they can be expensive. And this one's the Eau de Parfum, by the way. Um, that's my favorite one. There is obviously other ones. I would say to get the, the EDP if you can. Uh, but here it is. Fresh, spicy, citrus, amber, musky. La musky is what I was looking for. It's got a nice muskiness to it. Lavender, herbal, aromatic, anise, soft, spicy, and vanilla. Top notes are bergamot, middle notes are Sichuan pepper, lavender, star anise, and nutmeg. Base notes are ambroxan and vanilla. Okay, so this is where I was going to get to. Ambroxan. This is an ambroxan bomb. It has a lot of it. Man, am I skipping to you guys? I'm off. There you go. So it is an ambroxan bomb. And like we always say, what are the ladies' favorite fragrances? Ambroxan fragrances. It's just known to be a a scent or a note that women adore and they love so anytime you're looking for a good men's fragrance for picking up the ladies you have to get something with ambroxan in most cases or go with a sweet so you either want like a blue fresh fragrance with ambroxan or a sweet one like we were looking at earlier this is a banger anybody who gets it you, you you'll thank me later you'll love it you will absolutely love it everybody will love it this actually is one of the most popular men's fragrances on the planet. Um, now, one more. This one's a unique one, though. This one's a little different. It to me, it's a. It's got like a pink pepper in there, so it's like a zesty lemon with pink pepper. That's what it reminds me of. It's called Alexandria Bazooka, and then this will be the last one. I was gonna pull up one more, a tobacco fragrance, but. This one has, it's literally like, it smells like, like a, um, a lemon with pink pepper over it that spices it up, but not in like a super spicy way, but in, in a, in a good way. But it's one that you, man, yeah, it has a, a lemony zest right off the top. And then you instantly get down into like this pepper in, in a good way though. And that's, it's kind of sweetens up too. So it's got like a sweet zesty lemon and pink pepper or black pepper i don't know what's some type of pepper and it mixes together to a gorgeous fragrance the thing is though is that this is my second bottle i had a little bottle of it and then i bought the big bottle afterwards because it was it's so good um tobacco is good yes so i got a tobacco fragrance right here we could talk about azaro wanted by night this stuff might have tobacco in there too it smells like it has tobacco i don't know if it does though Let's just look it up. Here we go. Oh, shit. Not now. We got it. We got it. I didn't realize they were going to have it. Okay, so cool. We do have a note breakdown. So Alexandria Bazooka. 
Here it is. Citrus, warm, spicy. Yes, I knew it had tobacco. Look at me. Yes, this is a tobacco and leather fragrance. That makes sense. I didn't smell the leather, but I, in the dry down, I, I think I get it. But the tobacco is definitely prominent. So you have uh, tobacco, leather, fresh, spicy, cinnamon, woody, earthy, and sweet. Like I said, it has a sweetness to it. It has a, like a lemony zest, which is the citrus. Then it has this pepperiness, which is probably the tobacco um, and the warm spicy together. And it has the sweetness that comes out. Definitely a woodiness. I don't smell cinnamon personally, uh, but it's probably just a tiny note. Uh, top notes are grapefruit, bergamot, elemi. I don't know what that is. Pink pepper. Damn it. How good am I? How fucking good am I? I said pink pepper. Middle notes are cinnamon. I don't want to smell the cinnamon though. Paprika, saffron. I don't smell paprika either, but may maybe you guys will. Base notes are tobacco, leather, and vetiver. Definitely smell the tobacco. Like I said, this is a banger. And, and this company, you get these very affordably. Like you get the big bottles for like 40 bucks. And they're high quality oils. If this had a specific name on it, this would be a $300 fragrance. That's the way all Alexandria's fragrances are. Like if you go say to Paco Rabanne, right? Or which this one's not crazy expensive. It's like a hundred bucks for a hundred ML, which isn't too bad. But if you go to like uh, Tom Ford or, or many other ones, um, you're going to wind up spending hundreds of dollars for the oils that are in something like this, because this is really good quality. And after you've tried enough fragrances, you start recognizing the difference between synthetic and, you know, and also just stuff that, that, that is, is not well, one, not synthetic, but not um, like too sharp. And it doesn't smell, it smells good. Like in a, in like where it's like natural oils and natural scents and not just artificial shit. My favorite knife, close to $100, the Civivi uh, Vision, um, the Civivi Elementum Button Lock, this one, um, the Vision, and then uh, I love the, um, for 100 bucks, close to 100 bucks, mm, you can get... Um, you can get this, but it's way less than a hundred. But uh, these are some of my favorites right now. The Escort Kaiser Escort is about 95 bucks. Actually, I think this one's like 75 80 bucks. It might go up to like 95 bucks. You can get the 20 CV version that's like 150, but it's with aluminum scales and it is. A banger knife. This has an adjustable crossbar lock. Same thing with the drop bear. So love the drop bear. Um, you, you're not going to get the, well, you can get the the aluminum and 154 CM version for like 95 bucks with this one. Perfect knife. Like it is such an amazing knife. Um, you can get 3V from Kaiser for like 80 to 100. Um, 3V steel with my card. And they actually do a good job with this 3V. I also love the Kaiser Roach. This has a removable flipper tab, so you can take this flipper tab off, but it works so good. Uh, deep hollow ground spear point blade, just an awesome, awesome knife. And then, like I said, the 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 Civivi uh, Vision is one of my favorites. I love the Civivi Vision. Um, and like I said, we got the test, the cut test coming up on Monday. It should be Monday, Monday or Tuesday, but hopefully Monday. But this is one of my all-time favorite users. Um, it is a, a bit of a gravity knife, even though it's not labeled as a gravity knife, because you do have to use momentum to open and close it. I personally love it, but that's what I would go to. Um, I love, I like two some, but I just, I've stepped away from them for a little bit because I wasn't liking some of their practices. Um, this is $54, nine CR 18 MOV replaceable blade. They sell, they give you three blades. Is it? I think it's three right yeah you get three blades all together of nine cr 18 mov so you can resharpen it which is awesome and it's a titanium frame lock for 54 dollars with amazing action 
Like, stupid good. The thumb studs are great. This is a banger. And the blade, look how thin this thing is. This is a slicer. And, you know, like I said, it comes with the, um, a tool and extra blades. $54. So you can find it at the in the Neves Knives store. And sharpening supplies, just go to the top search bar and search Oletans. Oletans. And you will, it'll pop up. Oletans. I also have a full video on it. You can go check out. Um, Have you tried morning chess? What? Morning chess? No, I don't. No, I haven't tried that. I don't know what that is. Um, hey, Jared, love my zero, zero, my zero, nine, nine, zero micro Jimbo. Even my launch 13, looking for something new. Any recommendations on my next love? How much money are you trying to spend? Do you got 500 bucks? Do you got 500 bucks? Because if you got 500 bucks, I'll be doing a full review on this baby very soon. It's a good one. But 500 bucks, though. So. This has like Koenig action. So good. Ooh, fucker, I'll get you, though. Um, But yeah, that that's a banger. But I'm not sure how much I'm, There you go. There you go. This is the Archer. Tactile Archer. Wait for my video, though. Because I'm not even sure if they have any in stock right now. I don't think they do, but they will in just very, very soon. Uh, because they sent this to me. So, <sighs> it's so good. I haven't stopped carrying it since I got it. And I'll be honest. I, I, I've been... I, I plan on doing the review, right? But I technically could have been carrying anything because I have a lot of reviews I need to do. But... I fucking just love it. So I haven't, it hasn't left the pocket since I, since, literally since I opened it. I opened it, put it in the pocket and I've had it for like a week now. So I've already sharpened it. Um, can you still get them? Yeah, you can get them. Um, you sharpen. Yes, you can sharpen them. Yeah. It, Cause it's uh nine CR. It's a nine CR 18 movie and it's thin. So anytime you're sharpening a thin geometry, it sharpens up so much better than thick geometry. Now, Thick geometry, yeah, once you cut the edge bevel in, it sharpens up really good after that. But to cut in a proper edge bevel in something thick, take a long time. Uh, just ordered two Kaisers today with their early bird sale. I grabbed the Smolt Fixed Blade in 3V and the Deckhand in D2 with the DLC. I think it comes with additional red micarta scales. Really, I did not know that. Um, but I will say both are great knives, man. Those are two good, solid little EDC fixed blades. Um, and like I said, I can't speak to how Kaiser's 3V is across the board, but the one I did test did very well. But that's just one. So what's the best way to sharpen cedar or cheddar? The best way to sharpen cheddar with a knife. Uh, can you fail it? The new tactile archer tuned for flipper or hull? Both, both, both are equally as good. This is a phenomenal detent for the flipper tab. I wouldn't have thought so with it angled down like that. It's very comfortable, very, very good. And then the hole, this has a strong detent, but in a good way because this hole is grippy, it's the perfect size. Your finger lands on this texture in there, it's very, very easy. So I would say both. I, I equally as good, literally. The the reverse or the flipper tab. I enjoy both. And it has a kind of a cool sound. I kind of like it. Now, mine's not failing. Um, I'm not going crazy with it, but but I did give it a good uh 10 smacks or so. Uh oh. Alcord's got some more knives. Definitely go check her out. Why don't you guys read that and see if there's anything in there you like. You can go find her on Instagram and get a hold of her if there's anything in there you want. This knife I just got has, wait, got had a 30 or so degree edge. Just atrocious. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks, man. That sucks, LCV. I know. That's why I always resharpen, man. Um, like I always say, the factory edge should be the, the worst edge you will ever have on your knife. That's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the factory edge is the most lowest quality edge you are ever going to have on that knife. 
Now, if you're just learning and just beginning, then yes, your edges are not going to be as good as the factory edge, and the factory edge will be a little bit better. But over time, you will eventually get better and better and better. And if you have a fixed angle system, you'll be able to do it right away. You'll pretty quickly, pretty much right away, be able to get even better edges than any factory edge. Your edge will last much longer. Like the edge retention difference between a factory edge and a sharpened edge when you lower back the angle, like you're talking about the difference between like, say, 100 feet of cutting and 400 feet of cutting. Like a massive, massive difference. Like, and this is something that people don't realize. Koopy Carb, that's also a really good budget knife. Um, this is something people don't realize um, that they, when they get a knife and they'll get it in whatever steel, name that steel, and then they'll use it. And then they'll say, oh, that steel's shit. That steel is crap. Um, it went dull on me right away. And it's like, yeah, but did you resharpen it? Did you resharpen it? Because the factory edge is going to go most. I don't ever hold it against a company. Never. Like one of my, my favorite knives all went dull within like a day of me buying them. Literally my favorite knives. But I don't even think about it. I don't even give a fuck. Because that fucking edge is shit. Like I'm, I'm, I'm already planning on putting my own edge on it. So why do I care if it goes dull really quick? Good. Good. I'll fucking sharpen it. Because my edge is going to be so much better. I'll be able to maintain it easier, maintain it better, right? So, like, meaning, like, it'll hold a higher level of sharpness for much, much longer and be easier to strap, easier to hone. And the edge retention will just be, like, through the roof. Ronnie just became a member, man. Shout out to Ronnie Thomas, man. Thank you for joining. I appreciate you, bud. And uh, we have a members live um, next Sunday. My lip bleeding. Next Sunday, we have a members live and um, giveaway. Live and giveaway, just like every other Sunday. I have to disagree. If a company can't be bothered to out a decent edge on a blade, I question its quality. So, they, but it is, it is quality to their standards i'm not saying the one that we were just talking about 30 degrees per side i'm not talking about that i'm saying that most companies that the, their edges are not going to be able to compare to a fixed angled or freehand edge if you know how to sharpen so with that said some edges do come better than others like spider co i think their edges are great however I think they're great because they do a lower angle edge and, and things like that. But that doesn't mean it's the highest quality edge compared to what you can do. But some companies do a good job with factory edges to their, to like their ability because it's a belt. So you can't expect a belt to get a high performance edge. You just can't. That's not, it just doesn't work that way. You need a stone. It needs to be a proper abrasive on, on a nice flat surface. So you can, even if you're going to do a convex, Keeps looking like I'm bleeding. It's weird. Huh. Um, I'm back. I just got furniture delivered, so I have a whole bunch of boxes to cut up now. <laughs> James is fair enough. I fucking hate sharpening case knives. Great looking knives, but my goodness, their steel is straight garbage. Well, anytime you're going to deal with those carbon steels, you're going to run into those chances. Um, like Steve was explaining to me the other day how shitty 1095 is. And I've always known it was low quality. Like I never like put it on any sort of pedestal ever. Um, but I always felt like that it was going to be a good, it's at least a tough steel, right? It's going to be good for fixed blades at the very least that you're going to abuse. But after listening to what Steve, Steve basically broke down the numbers to me and it is fucking dog shit. When you really hear the numbers, you're like, why? Why even make that steel? Like when there's everything else, when basically everything else beats it in every way, shape and form, you start looking at it a lot differently when you see the numbers. Like it's, it, it's easy to put something on a pedestal because companies use it and companies sell it to you and they, they sell it to you as a performance steel or whatever. But then when you see the numbers and you compare it to other steels that are also low quality and those low quality steels are outperforming it 
in every way, shape, and form, it starts making you look at it a little differently. And I'm not talking shit about anybody who has 1095 steel. I have a bunch of it too. I get it. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But just know moving forward that when you go to get a, a, a good fixed blade of whatever sort, you want to make sure you're getting a, a better steel than 1095. I personally think. Uh, because if you're... <laughs> Unless if you're wanting, you know, just absolute garbage because, yeah, like I said, man, when you, and even like the toughness isn't even that good. Um, Well, for the hardness, the toughness for the hardness. So in order to get the toughness out of it, like it's not hard. So it's like, you're, you're just dealing with problems. I want the new scales for my spider comb manics too lightweight. Not much out there that I can find. Original goat. I think you can order them right now. You get them in a couple weeks. Aaron with the five bones. Sharpen my first knife on the TS Prof Pioneer today. Hell yeah. Better than previous fixed angled experiences. Thanks for the advice. Hell yeah, Aaron. I, I am happy you said that. And that is so awesome. And that is such a good thing. Um, And dude, you, it, you just open up a whole nother world, man. Because having a sharpener like that and... Like I said, the difference in the sharpeners you have absolutely play out with your edge. The difference in the quality of edge you're going to get um, and just everything about it is going to be superior in every way when you have a good quality system. Pepper Garms became a member, man. Shout out to you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Um, OG said my scales would ship on the third and nothing yet. Sometimes they're running a little late. Um, I'm sure that they'll be getting to you trying to stomach the hundred dollar price tag for the 1 million. Lucky you promise it's worth it. Mark fucking trust me. Trust me. Be prepared though. Be prepared. Um, because it's, it's the problem is, is you're going to get it and you're going to be pissed that it's discontinued. And uh, eventually you're not going to be able to replace it um, like that. I'm literally like this. I'm savoring my bottle because I already went through a full bottle. So I, I'm savoring what I have, I, but I'm going to have to buy another one. I don't have a choice. So I'm going to have to just bite the bullet very soon, even though I still have a half a bottle, but because I'm, I fear something happening, you know, not being able to get it. It is good, dude. I'm telling you, man. Uh, just get Cold Steel's SRK and 3B. Bang, bang. Eat Factory Edge. I've got was on. What? Each Factory Edge I've got was on a sword, believe it or not. I don't understand what that means. Um, Hoke sends them out with a pretty good edge. Yeah, I don't think Hoke does a bad job. <clears throat> I think there's companies that don't do a bad job for a Factory Edge. But what I'm saying is, is that a factory edge will always be shit compared to a stone sharpened edge. It's just superior. The, 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 the abrasive is done slower. It, it allows for a crispier apex, right? Because a belt is going fast, right? It's not only going fast. Even if they have it on slow, it's still a belt. So the belt has a little give. And now say if it's super tight, yeah, you can get still a super flat edge, but you're never going to get it to the comparison of a flat stone that, you know, for, for stretching out that apex to a crispy, clean, you know, and then stropping and deep burring and all of that. It's so much better when you do it on a stone. So the, the results are better. Have you ever sharpened a Spiderco Pical? Um, I don't think so, but I've sharpened a lot of Pical's. Um, Neves, you got to try Ormond, Jane, Montebacco, Verando, EDP. It's a citrus, light tobacco, fresh, easily going to be my daily this summer. I'm writing it down. Man, that's a big name, though. Oh shit, I can't do it on this. Yeah, me fucked up, man. That's my cut test. All right. Um Ormond Jane. What a name. Monta Montebacco. Oh, I kind of like the name now. Montebacco. I like that. Verano EDP. 
Yeah, that sounds fire with that name because now I know it has tobacco. <laughs> Uh, and I like tobacco when it's done well, when it's done well. This is a good tobacco, or it's a decent tobacco. I would say it's good. A lot of people, I think, will fucking love it. I am I like it, but it's a sweet, spicy tobacco fragrance. Tobacco is kind of spicy in a way. That's the type of spicy I like. I'm not big on, like, super spicy. I don't mind a little bit of pink pepper, and I don't mind tobacco. But this is a sweet tobacco fragrance. It's similar in some ways, not, not, not like one-to-one -one or anything, but similar to Spice Bomb, kind of. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Spice Bomb. I do have it, and it's okay, but this to me is far better than Spice Bomb. Spice Bomb doesn't even compare. Yeah, this is good stuff. This is a very masculine sweet scent. <clears throat> Just Google Verano EDP. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Jared, if you like fresh fragrances, Narcisco Rodriguez Blue Noir EDP is awesome. I actually had that, um, but I only had a sample of it. And now I can't remember it, but I did have some of that. I, I promise you I've had some, and, and I got it because it was so highly recommended. Sorry, Best Factory Edges was on a sword. Those cheap friction folders. Was you saying sword or sword? Um, I I've noticed personally for me, I know you, you might not be talking about a sword, but if you are, I've noticed that most swords come with shitty edges, but it's just different because their edges aren't trying to be highly sharp, they're trying to be tough. They want to be able to cut but be tough. Um, spice bomb has the coolest bottle, the coolest. Um, I've been liking Versace Eros. Yep, the Eros is good. If you like Eros, you probably would love YSL um, um, O Electric. It's spelled with an E, though. It's E U O or something. Electric. And not electric, electric. And it is, uh, it has a lot of similarities to Eros without being Eros. Like it's not Eros. They're very different, but they have some similarities. Um, I've noticed like that to me, like they fit the same area, the same arena. They would go head to head with each other um, in a competition. I have an original Civil War sword. Kind of cool. Fuck yeah, that is. Oh yeah. I got a... Uh... A bayonet slash trench knife. Look at that. Look at that bayonet style blade. Ooh, I love a bayonet blade shape. This is one of my favorite blade shapes because you can do it's so versatile. You do so much of the if it's ground right, like this is obviously made for punk punching in the shit. But if it's ground right, you can have it nice and sharp and pokey. Um, but yeah, this thing is pretty cool. Look at this. It has this feature down here that locks it in. So now in order to get it out, you have to push this button and then draw it. And yeah, pretty cool. U.S. But it doesn't focus. There we go. Aqua de Gio reminds me of a rave in 1998 classic scent. Yeah, I got the Aqua de Gio's. They're pretty good. Um, been remodeling all day. Dropped in for a comment and a like, but it's time to watch the bare knuckle fights. Take it. Yeah, dude. Awesome, man. Um, I'm probably going to go check them out after this too, man. Hell yeah. I like those bare knuckle fights. Um, man, they get nasty though, man. Sometimes they're hard to watch. I'll be honest. Um, as somebody who, who's fucking taken a beating a, a lot of times, you know, like, uh, meaning just like, you know, I've been punched in the face a lot and I've done a lot of punching in the face. So you know what it feels like, you know, to chip a tooth or, you know, whatever, get a broken nose over and over, <laughs> you know, I've had that happen a few times. I've broken my nose probably three times, um, two times in fighting. Um, well, maybe even three times. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, when you're watching it because you you know the feeling and you hear the 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 
the knuckles or the 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 bones clashing together. Oh man, it's get you pumped up. But man, sometimes I want to close my eyes just a little bit because it's like, you know, oh, how's your love knife? My love knife. Which one's my love knife? I got a lot of love knives. My Cadet Pro is awesome. Cadet Pros are awesome. Everything from TS Prof is awesome so far. Where are bare knuckle fights? Uh, what do you mean? Where do you watch them? Just look them up on YouTube. They're all over YouTube. Um, you can pretty much watch them uh, on any of the social medias. Uh, that one guy, I can't think of his name right now, but I know his name very well. He's like the number one fighter right now. <clears throat> and like everybody says, and I, I agree with everything everybody else says with this, that that guy was born to be a bare knuckle boxer. Like he is just like, he is so tough he, he, and he's, he's not a big dude. He, so he's kind of short, but he's just got so much tenacity. His fucking, his nose is sunken in. You can tell he's been rocked so many times, but he's just got the head and the knuckles for it. And like he says, you know, it's very different <clears throat> bare knuckle boxing from regular boxing. Because with regular boxing, your gloves are big, so you can keep your hands kind of separated a little bit. When you're bare knuckle boxing, you got to keep them tight because a fist will get through. So in order to, to block the fists, you know, coming in and not get punched in the fucking mouth, you have to, you know, keep them nice and tight. And he said in that alone, getting through an entire fight clenched like that is so tiring. Your, your hand just want to drop. And I, I can understand that. Did you ever check out the We Solid? Yes, I have a full review on it. And it is good. Yes, it's a great one. Hector with the 10 bones. Thank you, brother. Four months ago, I could say I had never heard of Benjamin Savivi Kaiser. Found your channel and was drunk. Started the collection with the Vision FG. Banger. Um, Deca and Praxis, love your vids. Here's 10 bones, man. Hector, you're the best, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And welcome, man. Welcome to the knife community. This is the best community in the world. And, uh, and yeah, man, it, it, you've just only begun, man. You're gonna find a lot of amazing, amazing pieces, amazing, amazing people. And you know, get to know some of the guys in the community, man. You'd be surprised, man. These guys, a lot of these guys have your back. You can buy, sell, and trade knives and get into other things too, you know, like wallets, flashlights, everything, because I think it's in a man's nature, right? I just think it's in our nature. I think it's a, it's ingrained in our DNA to like be, to be prepared, right? If you go back a thousand years, I promise you the cavemen or whatever of those days had an EDC. They had pouches. They had things that carried on them to start fires, to do whatever, right? Just things to have on them. And I think we have that ingrained in us to do that. That's why we carry around essentials and little things, you know, that could possibly save us or, or just make our life easier and better. Um, I don't fully trust anyone who hasn't been punched in the face. Yeah, it's tough, but a lot of people probably tell you they've been punched in the face that haven't actually been punched in the face. I don't know. Maybe people aren't that big of a liar, but um, I've definitely met some people that probably, would, I don't know, maybe they have or haven't, but I wouldn't believe them if they said they've been punched in the face. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people run from being punched in the face. So, you know, there's a lot of people and I'm not saying anything bad about anybody, you know, that hasn't been punched in the face. Like, you know, good for you if you haven't. Uh, but I don't think anybody should run from being punched in the face because sometimes you just need to get punched in the face. It just is what it is. Um, you have any tips for sharpening soft steels? My 80, 20.5 and a cheap Gerber. My son has are a pain in the neck. I think they're both too soft. I can get, I can get them, but I wondered if you've got any tricks. So yeah, the, the one trick is, um, throw it in the garbage. No, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, man, there's not much you can do. The only thing you can do is try to get the best quality edge on there. What I'll say is the burr removal is probably going to be your biggest issue is taking that off without fatiguing steel on the apex. Um, but go with a medium grit. Don't go with a fine grit. You have to go with a, a medium to coarse grit with a soft steel. So you want to go between 400 and 800 grit. I would say 600. Go with 600 grit. And then, um, you know, with a lower angle, your edge will come out sharper, but it's, you know, you're not going to have a lot of stability because it doesn't have the hardness. So 
Just know that, you know, as long as you're using it for regular cutting purposes, lower back the edge angle to 17 degrees per side, even 15 degrees per side. And when you remove the burr, do it extremely gentle. Don't don't rush the burr removal. Don't don't try to just snap it off. Don't try to just remove it. Fatigue it off or gradually get it off. Let it take a, let it take a little bit. Be very patient with it and very soft, meaning no pressure when you remove the burr. That's what I recommend. I broke a dipshit's hand when I was 17. I was slow on a duck, and it was like I head butted his fist. I pretended I did it on purpose. That's funny. Um, it's actually a tactic. Um, you know, I, I I've definitely done it where you drop your head. To, because somebody's punching you and you drop your head to, to to hurt their hand it hurts you too it fucks you up too but but it definitely hurts their hand because anybody who's ever punched somebody in the face it hurts it does it just hurts there's no way around it um that is the reason why boxers wrap their hands and put gloves on and all that stuff is you absolutely will break your knuckles i've broken all kinds like the bones in your hand like you're gonna you abs very easily break them so when you when you punch somebody and you get them like in the jaw or the head it, it feels like these bones get pushed back like it just it hurts really bad it feels like like they're because you you have so much adrenaline going in you so you, you're punching hard and you feel that pressure that pressure and when you're done your hands are hurting so if you punch somebody in the fucking head yeah you're gonna feel it um, you know, but if you're really aggressive, you're going to take that and just, you know, eat it like nothing and worry about it later. I don't trust anyone who talks with their hands. I see. I can't go with that one because I grew up around some, a lot of Italians. They all talk with their hands. They're all talk. They always talk like that. So, um, I think it just depends on the environment and where they grew up and things like that. Uh, but you know, hey, uh, never trust anyone. That says they've never lost a fight. Ooh, that's definitely a good one. I'd say if somebody has never lost a fight, then they probably haven't been in a lot of fights. Because it could be true. You might have only gotten into one fight and one, you know, of course. But that just means you haven't been in many fights. So you, you can't, saying I've never lost a fight is kind of a, a trick, right? Because it's it's like I've never lost the only fight that I ever had, <laughs> you know. Oh, uh, why can't I donate money? No bones, just memberships. Weird. Um, you should be able to. Just, there's a thing at the bottom, dollar sign, or maybe you're just saying because you you ain't got no bones. I get you. Don't, don't worry about it, man. You don't have to donate. Just sit here and hang out. Too soft. That's what she said. You've heard that one a lot, huh, Barry? <laughs> Damn, just finished up my Herman Vespertillo on my Beneath 800, and this thing is S cutting paper towel, sharpest knife I've ever held, and only feels better since I'm the one who did it. That is so true. One, Herman does a pretty good job with their heat treatments, even if they're not running at super high HRC, they still do a good job. But another thing, though, like you said, yeah, when you put your own edge on there and it is that sharp, it's S cutting paper towel. It's such a good feeling. Like not only that you did it, but, but you, it, it's, it's like building something, you know, when you build something, you're proud of what you built. You took nothing and turned it into something. And it's kind of like that. Keeping edging as long as possible for the greatest return. The burr is the issue. I get them almost there. Then I can't finish them off. Drives me crazy. It's like one stepping forward. But just so you know, I had one. It was an 80, 20.5. That stuff, it was so bad. It was so bad that um, when I sharpened it, the steel came out flaky. So the burr wasn't like a regular burr. It wasn't a wire. It was literally like, like square flakes. It was really fucking weird. Um, and it was really bad. You could, cl I clearly could tell this is a, a very, 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 very burnt edge. Um, it took like 10 sharpenings to get out, you know, the burnt edge. It was bad, but that made it to where, well, one, if you sharpen it a few times, you might get into good steel. It could just be burnt, burnt edge, but let's say it's the heat treatment. Cause it could possibly be, um, I'm sure the one I had was both. But yeah, if it if it's so bad, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bitch. Like that one that I was doing, <clears throat> it never it never came out good. And the finally, like I said, like after like ten sharpenings, it finally I got a decent edge on it. But 
all of them before that, the burr wouldn't remove. Um, the burr, like I said, was flaky. The, the steel, the steel would not take and hold bite at all. Like it was almost like even with a medium grit edge, it was still slick. Like there was no bite. Um, have the vision FG Moyaro pyrite. What is a good knife to get next? That is a bit different than those. You have FG. Okay. You want to get the escort or the drop bear. And then you get the escort or drop bear. The ne the other one I would recommend, or two other ones, two other ones. The Kubi Momentum. This is a good one. And the Civivi Button Lock Elementum Gravity Knife. I fucking love this thing. This is one of my favorite knives. Um, I've got three of them. This is an awesome one, but that's what I would recommend. Um, the Cubit too is another good one. The Civivi Cubit, the Civivi uh, Chevalier, the um, yeah, the Cubit though, man. The Cubit is fucking badass. That's a super slicer. Anyone who's never lost a fight, never dated a woman. That is bars, bars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. If I was a punching dog one, I'd have a knuckle duster. <laughs> the newest Stoop, st Stoop Stuff video is a definite must watch. Stoop Stuff. M398 is 17 degrees with nine thousandths behind the edge. Laser beam. Yeah, their M398 is pretty decent, too. I haven't tested it, but, you know, I have some of it, and it, seem it seems decent. So... Um, I love Jared and Kara. Love Kara more. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> do you have an all-time favorite knife? No, but I do have some knives that I'm really, really wanting in the collection. Um, like, I really want to get a Holt. I really want to get, um, I, especially like one of the new ones that they're doing. Um, they, they look badass. What's the best degree to sharpen at? It depends. It depends. It depends. Um, and the answer to the other question about my favorite knife, I might have favorite like top tens, top twenties, and then also in certain categories, you know, like you have to give me specifics, like for a pocket knife, for a camping knife, uh, for a fighting knife, you know, they're all going to be different answers. What's the best degree to sharpen knives at? So, it depends on the geometry. It depends on a lot of factors, what you're doing with it and what type of knife it is, what's it for. But for pocket knives made for cutting, right? Not for abuse. 17 degrees per side is a good average, right? Most knives are going to do well at 17 degrees per side. However, if your edge is very, very thick and narrow, that it might, it could possibly be a nightmare to sharpen it at that low of an angle if it's super thick. But if it's just regular geometry and it's just good geometry, 17 degrees per side is a good edge angle. You want to go usually between 15 and 20 degrees. Um, between 20 and 22.5 is a tough edge. 17 to 20 is a keen edge with that sharp, but also holds toughness. 15 to 17 is super sharp, lower toughness. So just think of it like that. I meant stroppy stuff. Gotcha. I thought that's what you meant, but I, I, I sometimes I read the thing wrong and I, I think I know what they're saying and then I'm wrong. <laughs> Anybody know what a fair price would be on a Spyderco bombshell? I saw one for sale, but didn't know the collector market really. I do not know on that one. Um, But uh, <laughs> Jimmy, you are by far the best texter. <laughs> asking jared for his favorite knife is fighting words in these parts yeah yeah i don't know if i've ever answered that question i don't think i have it's just too difficult like if you give me a price range like what's your favorite 95 dollar knife i might be able to come up with an answer or what's your favorite 126 dollar knife or um what's your favorite outdoors knife for climbing cliffs just in case if you run into a bear Ask me some ridiculous questions with a lot of uh, 
with a lot of information, I, I might be able to give you something. Love my escort, but I have the 20 CV. The 20 CV one's the best one. It is. And I don't mean because of the steel. It's because of the aluminum. The, the, the micarta is great because it's contoured. The aluminum is flat, but the, the aluminum one, it, it has a better weight. It feels more solid. This is very ergonomic. So if you don't have the money for the aluminum one, this is a, an amazing knife. But I do love the aluminum one more. So, uh, but yes, they do feel different. Uh, super sticker, super chat, or membership gifting. Only three options tonight. Oh, well, next time, buddy. That's okay. No problem. Drew with the five bones. Jared, did you get a special Elementum S35 jungle? They are already sold out and they dropped four to nine. I don't think so. I got here. So I don't know exactly what I got. Uh, maybe I didn't get, I don't know if I, this is a, a star flare. And a blue tick. Maybe I didn't get an... Oh, wait. This is probably it. Um, no. What is this? Oh, this is that one. What is this, then? Hold on a second. The Yardbird. Oh, okay. So, this is the 10th anniversary. I'm not even supposed to show you guys this. So, this is the 10th anniversary knife. Pretty dope. Phenomenal flipping action. It's got that dual ground drop point blade. Beautiful blade. It's almost a Tonto. Yeah, actually, it's a drop point Tonto. But this is going to work just like a drop point. Um, this section right here will be nice. It's a nice hollow grind right there. Good access to the lock bar. Super snappy detent. Yeah, this is pretty good. I like this. Oh, and it's got a Timascus pivot collar. I just noticed that. Oh, that's cool. That looks good. That stripe looks really good, too. Right here, the Timascus pivot collar. Um, so this one is a special edition 10-year anniversary. And then we have a yard bird in here, too. I don't know if you guys remember that. I did a video on it on Blade Show. Um, the, the budget knives. Let's check this one out really quick. Like I said, I don't even remember these. I... I, I haven't had time to really check them out um, because the date's not up yet. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. Check this out. Don't tell anybody, guys. I'm not supposed to be showing you guys this. Um, James K. with the two bones, your favorite rock climbing bear defense blade. <laughs> check out this. <laughs> I'm going to have to give you an answer now. I got one for you. I got one for you. Give me one second. This is a badass knife, man. Holy shit, that's thin. That is slicey. Oh, my goodness, is that comfortable. This is a good one. Button lock, and you know Civivi does such a good job with their button locks. Listen to that. That is beautiful. Very ergonomic. I like this a lot. Solid aluminum handles. I normally don't like a handle that tapers like that from thick to slim. I usually want it from slim to thick. This works. Like, this is very, very, it's a, it's a good thickness back here. Where the clip doesn't really bother you, rock, rock solid lock up. Great, um, great thumb stud action. Man. Bears don't rock climb. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Bears will absolutely rock climb, just not straight up. They go at an angle. Um, but um, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Polish custom knives, Bear Slayer. That's what I'm calling it, even though that's not the name. This is from Polish Custom Knives. Absolutely badass. An O2 tool steel harpooned. Straight back blade with a little recurve for cutting the noses off of bears. And then it's got a bear skin leather sheath. I'm just joking. I don't think it's bear skin. It's cow leather probably, but <laughs> very ergonomic though, man. I just want to just chop some shit with this. And I can plunge it into something with that nice harpoon. Not going to be the best pokey bitch, but it, it'll still poke you for sure. That's my bear knife. Polish bears. Yes, the Polish bears. 
May I ask what stones you tested the other day in the private video? They are, um, I'm going to show you. Now, like I said, I'm not done with the video yet, so I do not have a link for you guys yet. But I will give you guys a little look-see at who this, this company is. So this is the company right here. So they uh, just started. They're, they're from Ukraine. So this is their new site, their USA market, where, because like I said, they're going to ship their stones here to the USA and then uh, sell them, you know, here. So you're not going to have to wait weeks to get them. But this is them. And uh, you'll see some of their things say TS Prof. So I, I'm not sure if TS Prof, if they were just making stones for TS Profs. Because you see that you don't see it on these, but I have some that say it. So I think they like made some specifically for TS Prof at one point. Uh, right there. See that? TS Prof right there. How it says that? You guys see that? Yeah. Um, so I am liking them a lot so far. Um, they do come in a nice wooden case like you see here. They have metallic bonded and resin bonded. And as you can see... You see the diamonds are mixed throughout the resin. This one's um, the CBN and copper plus tin and aluminum. Uh, aluminum backing and then copper and tin mixed with diamonds in it. Um, they work good. I, I actually like these. I, the other metallic bonded not, uh, stones I got from another company, I wasn't a big fan of. But these this stuff I like. Which drop and compound do I get to finish a pocket blade on and what size do I apply it on the smooth side or the suede side? Doesn't even matter. So, yes, it matters. But what I will say is if you're going to get good emulsion, like a diamond emulsion, like the one I'm about to recommend, stroppy stuff, Neve Knife Co. linked at the top of the description. Just go to the Neve Knife Co. linked at the top of the description. Click on it. And um, and pick, pick which micron you want out. Uh, but... Um, that stuff I would recommend the firm or the 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 flesh side, so not the suede side, the smooth side, because it doesn't just absorb into it. Like with the suede side, it'll absorb into the leather a little bit more. The emulsion will spread across the flesh side really well. You can put a nice thin layer, let it dry. Now you can use the furry side too. You can use both sides. That's not a big deal. You can use both, but it the diamond emulsion. Tend, the liquid diamond emulsion tends to work better, in my opinion, on the flesh side. The furry side might hold on to diamonds a little bit better, um, possibly, but it soaks in so fast, it's hard to spread. So you wind up having to add a lot more to it. Now, if you have the um, the crayon-like stuff, uh, fucking aluminum oxide, silicon carbide, whatever, the green stuff or the white stuff, use the furry side. Use the, the suede side. I don't know what I should get next. I'm torn between the Tuya Wrath V2 or a perfect pyrite. Well, the Wrath is better in the sense that it's thicker titanium. It's a little bit more, it feels like more work went into it. The Pyrite is a great knife. I love it. And it comes in so many different options. Uh, but it is a button lock. Button locks tend to have, you know, issues here and there. Frame locks, you know, we, we are easy to fix and adjust. Uh, with the button locks, you can. It depends. But um, I personally would recommend the Wrath in that situation. I do love the Pyrite, though. And I do think there's some great Pyrites. But I think you'd rather that one. Find it odd the stroppy stuff doesn't recommend coarse spray anymore. Yeah, you know what? I think that they were completely wrong about that, though. I watched his video, and I, I didn't agree with what he said because I think he was going about it wrong because he was doing what I seen was over stropping. That's what I seen. When you have a more abrasive one, you just don't do as much stropping. The point, you're, you're only supposed to strop until, right? You don't try to keep going. Like, like when I get done sharpening, right, the goal of the stropping compound when I get done sharpening is not to make my edge sharper, right? My edge is sharp from the stone. It's to 
remove any debris that's in between my microscopic serrations and to possibly refine and add a couple little tiny microscopic scratches in between my microscopic serrations. So that means I'm only going to do a few passes. I, I don't I don't have to sit on it for very long because the longer I sit on it, the more it's going to refine my scratches and make it less sharp. So you just do a few passes and then it's better. It's kind of like, like a lot of things, right? There's like a hill. You're going to get to a point and it's going to drop. So why go over that fucking hill? Just stop when you get to the top. And that, that's kind of the way I looked at what was happening. I felt like you get, you get to the top and then just go over. So that's my experience though. You know, everybody's going to be a little bit different. I tend to strop until like, you know, like say if I'm doing it for edge maintenance, I'm not going to sit there on the strop and go crazy because I know that's such a fine grit. Say if it's nine micron or six micron, that's very, very, very fine. So it's going to, it's going to work faster. So I would strop a little less on it. And then say with the lower stuff, I might strop a little more, but I recommend six micron. Six micron is probably going to be the most versatile. You can go one to six micron for finer edges or, you know, just even you can use one micron on toothy edges too. But I'm just saying like, if you're trying to be picky, um, Hey, outdoor Alex, what's up, brother? I agree as well. Too much pressure on coarse straps will round edges. I have literally thousands of images showing this. Right. Yeah. And then also like, and this depends on you, right? You might not be very good at going across the strap without lifting and lifting is your, your worst nightmare, which is also goes to hand in hand with pressure. So if I'm going to go across the stone, and or sorry, the 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 strop, and I start stropping like this. Watch watch the spine, and I do this. That will round your apex. It one hundred percent will. Just like if you apply pressure, because the pressure is going to dent into the leather, and the leather is going to like go around it like this. So it, it's going to round it again. So you want very very light pressure, and you want your apex to just touch the leather if you can look at it and get your eyes down here you can just watch it and literally like just like sorry Mitch, you can lay your spine down and you'll see like um, a shadow underneath the edge if it'll focus and lift 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 until you see the apex touch once that apex touches you're there you're there you're there leave it there and then very gentle passes now remember if it's not hitting the apex. You can always, which it will be, but let's say your angle is still too low. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing's going to get hurt, but if you go up too high, it will hurt it. So it's better to be safe than sorry. But what I say is go right to when the apex touches, you don't have to go any higher. Just as soon as you see the apex touch it, bam, that's it. And because leather is a little bit more forgiving, you know, it, it, it you know, it's, you can dent it, you know, like when you're going across that, even if you're gentle, there's still some sort of give, but try to be very gentle. There's so much variation in techniques between people that what works for one may not work for someone else. Absolutely. And both people can be right. Absolutely. I 100% agree. I 100% agree. It's kind of like you, you, you like, you tend to like the furrier side of the straps. And I always did too. I've only recently started liking the, the the flesh side more when it comes to diamond emulsions um, just because of the way they spread and how they sit on the surface. But I actually agree with you that the, the furry side holds on to it longer because it's the fibrous. So it, it, it's basically it's stuck in the pores, but the flesh side is easier to clean. So you can take like a flesh side strop with like shoppy stuff and when you're ready, you can just spray some alcohol on it and wipe it off. Um, and the, the furry side, you can't really do that as much on. But but yeah, man, to each their own. You're definitely going to have some preferences, and which is fine. Everybody's going to have that. And I, I think that's good. I think it's good when you get to a point to where you do know, where you know what you prefer, right? Whether Regardless what it is, regardless if it's what I say or agree with, it doesn't matter. It's what works for you. I have to send you some leather and see what you like. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I see. I got a lot, a lot of fucking leather. Like, um, I have tons of straps right now. My favorite strap is too expensive, so I can't recommend it to anybody. But it's from Strappy Stuff. So my favorite compound is from Strappy Stuff, and my favorite leather. But their leather is super thick, and it's pretty hard. Um, it's a little forgiving, but it's still really hard. But it seems to work perfect for the strappy stuff. Now, it's too damn expensive to buy, though. Like, they sent it to me, so I love it. But but I personally would not buy it. I mean, I don't know. I might buy it because I do really like it. But I wouldn't recommend anybody to buy it. I would say make your own straps. Go buy an Amazon uh, Beaver Craft leather. That's decent enough. Or like what Alex said, get the uh, the belt making leather. They sell it in rolls. You can roll it out and cut cut sections out and make your own straps. Go get a piece of wood, you know, uh, cement it on. Good to go. How can I increase the detent on an integral frame lock? So you got to take off. It depends. So this is the problem. The problem is, is the other scale. The other scale is going to get in the way. So if, and only if, if you take out the blade and the lock bar, because the lock bar, when you take out the blade, it's going to move over, right? So wherever it's positioned, if it's touching the other side, you're not going to be able to do anything. But if it's far away from the other side, then you can. You're just going to have to squeeze it until it touches the other scale or gets close to it, clamp it for you know a few hours or a couple hours or something, and then come back to it. Because you can't extend it far enough to where it'll come back to a good position, you can kind of clamp it and get it to, to just set by over time. Then when you put it back together, it should have a stronger detent. But it's tough, though, if it doesn't, you know, if you can't, um, if you have no room to bend it, then it, it's hard to work, you know. Yes, Alex's channel is awesome, man. Um, and, and anybody who doesn't know, Alex, Outdoors 55, you see him in the chat. Go and subscribe to his channel. Go give him a follow. Go give him some love. He's got an amazing channel with just packed with information, valuable information. And, uh, and yeah, I, I absolutely watch every single one of his videos without a doubt. Everything he posts, I watch. And I guarantee if you were subscribed to him, you would be too. Can an old belt make an okay strap? Yeah, but it doesn't mean it's going to be the best. If you said I missed it, sorry, I was talking to my son for a bit. So, yes, you can make a strap out of an old belt. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be the best. So, leather quality is still a thing with straps. Certain leathers work better than others. And also, depending on the emulsion and the abrasive you're going to use and your, your preference. Uh, usually, like, when I was a beginner, I really, really liked, you know, certain types of leather, you know, but I think as time goes on, you know, you, you change and evolve because you do wind up trying other things. But, uh, but yeah, you can use an old belt, you know, just the thing is that you need an, you need an abrasive. So remember the leather isn't doing much. It's the abrasive. So the leather is just the surface that's holding the abrasive. And the beautiful thing about it is it has pores. So the pores allow the leather to hang on to abrasives. So when you put the diamond emulsion or aluminum oxide, chromium oxide, whatever you put on there, once it's covered, the pores trap it and it, it has the ability to, to become a good surface to hold that abrasive on for you to use, you know, so that's kind of the point. We definitely got to do a live. I'm ready. I'd love that, man. Anytime. I am I am down. I think that would be awesome. I um you know Alex, you should think about this. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but the vertical lives, if you do a vertical live where your phone is upright like this, not sideways, upright like this, it puts you into the shorts feed and you would be surprised how many views you'll get in just a few hours. Like I had like 50,000 views on my live, like within like an hour um, and or almost 50,000. Now what's cool about it is that you get a, basically a brand new audience. So you, you one you get a lot of subscribers from it, but, but not even just that you get to reach out and talk to people that have genuine questions 
that that are have no idea so like they're just finding you and they are actually like very curious and it feels good you know like talking to them sometimes you know they'll, they'll get a little weird and crazy because like i said it is a new audience so be prepared but it's really cool though man uh, and i i'm thinking about um seeing if some people want to do live sharpenings or something like that i thought that'd be a good idea um because that's what i use it for i do sharpenings on there because people tend to come in and really like the content uh but it'd be awesome to do um you know like a a, a collab um someone needs to message rogan about getting these on i know I know. I've been trying to reach out to him. He won't answer me. No, I'm just joking. I've never reached out. I don't even know how to reach out to him, except for maybe like Instagram or something, but he ain't going to answer you there. You got to find, you got to be able to talk to, um, to his people to get on the show, but he's got the best, the, like the biggest people on the planet going to his shit. He would never have me on. Um, not that I wouldn't love to go on and shoot the shit with Joe, but, uh, Yeah. Yeah, you know, I know he likes knives though. I do know that. He definitely likes knives. He definitely has probably a few good knives. I've seen a couple of them. Um, last time I seen it was on a, a podcast, he was carrying a Benchmade Crooked River. Um, it was the gold class one, I think. And uh, yeah, Jared, I really liked your short streams mostly because it's earlier in the day, almost 5 a.m. here. Yeah, that's another thing you definitely get to go into. A different time zone for people so you know you get to reach people that aren't normally in your other lives i know we should definitely do that i want to do that um hopefully we can set something up soon i am absolutely down i dig those scope shots i wash them over and over yeah he's got a really good microscope i'm jealous of his microscope i got a, a microscope but it is not as good as his his is 100 better than mine um and he's going to force me to wind up investing in a better one. Um, so I'm definitely going to do that, which should be awesome because it does help you. Even like with the, the power mine has you, when you start understanding what's happening at a microscopic level, it changes everything about how you're going to approach what you're doing because you start actually understanding, even like down to the burr, like what's happening when the burr removes, you know, and, and what's left behind. It, it really tells you like, well, you, you know, like why you shouldn't use pressure or much pressure at all, because the burr is such a fragile thing already that if you add pressure, all you're doing is affecting your apex, which is the opposite of what you want. You want your apex is already, it should be, if you're doing it correctly, it's already made right? You have the wire that's just built up on top that that's fragile. So it doesn't take any pressure to remove it. The stone that you're going to use is hard enough to rip that fucker off fast, but that's what you don't want. You don't want to rip it off fast. You want to either one, slowly break it down until you reveal the apex or two, fatigue you back and forth until it snaps off or a little bit of both. But either way, you're very, very gentle because adding pressure will just remove it too fast which can lead to like micro tear out things like that but even worse your stone will reach your apex and affect it so when you when you've already you've already set it there is a like there is a point like put it this way right say if you sharpen your knife to whatever whatever degree whatever stone after you're done Let's say you're done sharpening. You just got done stropping. It's crispy sharp. You're not going to go and take it and put it back on stone, right? That's just stupid, right? Because you've already set it. You've already done it. It's already done. That's kind of like what, what oh, like put adding pressure to burr removal is doing. You've already set your apex. Your goal is not to, to, to put more teeth on or anything like that. It's to remove the burr. So by adding pressure, you're actually affecting the microscopic teeth that are at the apex. So that's why, you know, it's your results are so much better. If you go nice and gentle when you're doing the burr removal, Joe had a freaking murder and body chop and butcher on what the fuck you're already leaps and bounds ahead of some of his guests. I don't know. I don't know if I can compare to a, um, a, a body chopper. Um, do some fake businesses with Tim Dillon. He's got Rogan's ear. <laughs> some fake businesses. Why can't I do a legit one? 
Oh, it's hilarious. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to spend about two more minutes, then we're going to get out of here. What's up, Jared? I'm a super happy boy tonight. Just got a hole. Oh, I was just talking about that. I want a hole. V2 frame lock and S90 V is 61 HRC. It's beautiful. I, um, I seen that they have a new model coming that looks dope. Um, I really want to see them do, I think, I think there's one too. I'm not positive, but I feel like I seen one with a fuller or a hole deployment plus the flipper tab. I really want to, I'd love to see them do a knife with multiple deployments. Um, Jared, my man, I love you. Send my love to Kara as well. I definitely will. Um, thank you, man. I appreciate the support. I need to make a strap, but I am always worried about the right leather. Ah, don't worry too much into it. I, I would do exactly what Alex said. If you're trying to make your own, just get belt leather from Amazon. It'll be decent quality because belt leather is, you know, decent quality. It's going to be thick and it'll be just fine for what you're going to do. Um, and, and otherwise you could, you can get some beaver craft or, you know, you could, I did this once where I just bought a sheet of cow leather. You can cut your own. The problem is, is there are imperfections. It, it, it's not going to be the best cut of leather, or it might be a good cut of leather and there might be a lot of good to it, but there might be some little spots because cows get scars, cows get fucked up. So, um, Outdoor says, dog one, yes, it's a microscope lens on a focus rig to allow the camera to move. All the images shown are stacks of 40 to 60 individual images. Yeah, I got to get on that shit. Holt, Renegade, and two more supposedly coming. One's a sheep's foot. Hell yeah. I'm worried about homemade straps not being flat. Well... The strop is going to be as flat as the surface you put it on. You can get a metal plate. You could get a plastic plate. You can get a wooden piece of wood. Um, just get something flat. As long as something's flat, then uh, use contact cement to put it on. Do it the right way, though. Don't, you know, don't, um, you know, apply it bad. Make sure you read the directions. Do it exactly how the direction says it. And, uh, yeah, and put it on and, you know, clamp it overnight or whatever however long you need to and it should be fine you shouldn't have no problems and if you don't want that then just buy one just buy one pre-made speaking of using a microscope i just ordered a jeweler's loop through amazon nowhere close to using a microscope haha -ha, comes in tomorrow dude that's the first start that's where i started was a jeweler's loop i still got them i still use them so there's nothing wrong with that that's actually quicker because sometimes you know it's it's a pain to put it in the microscope turn it on and Get everything set up if it's not set up jeweler's loop i can just literally bam grab it and look so uh the one thing i will recommend is make sure you get a jeweler's loop with a light I i've noticed that like unless if you're in like a studio where you have a lot of light or anything a jeweler's loop can be a pain if it doesn't have the light it can be i'm not saying always just hit over 100 subs jared they're on me they're me wait jared they are me rolling yeah but it does doesn't leather con contract oh yeah yeah of course um leather is going to expand and contract but just tighten it you know just give it a good stretch make sure it's nice and tight roll it on maybe or something you know like with a roller where you press it um i think you're thinking too hard into it you, you'll be just fine there's no problems man you, you'll, you'll, you, maybe, maybe the first one you do won't be the best. Later, Alex. I'll talk, talk to you later, man. Appreciate you, uh, jumping in. We got to definitely set something up, man. I made a strop. It's ugly as shit, but it works great. That's what, that's what matters. That's what matters. I've got like shitty pieces of leather laying around that, you know, I could easily just slap onto a box if I wanted to, like literally just stick it to this and just use it. Um, so, you know, you, you, you could just have a sheet of leather and just lay it down on a flat surface and use it that way. If you, I mean, if you don't have something to glue it to sharpen two identical knives each, and then test on one of those string cut thingies just for fun. Tile would be two best knife experts. Go ahead, dad. That would be cool. But the problem is, is that those tests cheat. They're cheating tests. They don't work to be honest. And I don't like the thought of that because there's no possible way for you to know what the truth is. That's the problem. 
I promise you, I could get the lowest number. That's my point. I, I could have the, the duller edge, meaning my edge is not as good as Alex's, and still beat him because the test is cheatable at a degree that is is so crazy that it makes it impossible. I would never, ever watch two people do a test and see the numbers and think that it was accurate. Never, never, not once. I just did a, I just watched a video the other day and I had to comment to the guy, hey, bud, I'm sure you don't know you did this because he didn't, he didn't know. He did a video and... He was clearly cheating, but he didn't know he was cheating. Let's be, let me be honest. He didn't know he was cheating, and I'm sure he didn't. But he made the video, and he posted it, so I just let him know. I was like, listen, man, I'm not trying to rain on your parade or talk shit or anything like that, but it was very clear that you were cheating. And I told him, I said, I'm sure you didn't do it on purpose, but just so you know, you know, it's very easy to see somebody cheating the machine and the test if you know what to look for. And then he agreed with me. He says, yeah, I found that out later. You know, at the time when I was doing the video, I didn't realize that. And I believe him. But that just shows you right there. Like, there's so many people on the internet using that test and are either, one, cheating out of ignorance, or two, cheating on purpose. One of the two. And that's tough, man. That's tough to watch because it starts – it. As a sharpener that knows how sharp I just get, when you start seeing these guys and they're like, I got a 35 or whatever, right? Some crazy number. Other people are looking like my fucking edges will never get that sharp, right? But it's like, neither does his. His edges ain't that fucking sharp. He's lying. He's cheating. I um, mean, you can go watch my video. Go watch my video on why you shouldn't trust that, that sharpness tester, and it'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and why. And you now, you'll never be able to watch one of those machines again. Like, not meaning you won't be able to watch it, but what I meant to say is you won't ever be able to take them seriously when you're watching them again, when you see how easy they are to cheat and how difficult it is. Well, one, it's easy to see somebody's cheating, but if somebody doesn't want you to know they're cheating, it's very easy to look like you're doing it right. Yes. And that's why, like, we could do some other type of sharpness test. I say, I think, I think paper towels like the best. Um, hair whittling is another one. Best tester is worst machine on the market. They need to make something that takes out the human. That's the big thing. You're right, Todd. They they need something, right? Pressure and speed. They need something that regulates the pressure and the speed that it takes to cut it because the tiniest difference in speed changes everything. Like it just gets better. So I might be going very slow, right? But let's say I'm going just a little bit faster than the other guy, just a tiny bit by a fraction. Well, my number is going to be better then, even if my edge isn't sharper. Um, yeah, I prefer the S cut. <laughs> yeah, me too. How do you cheat on a sharpness tester? Just going fast, any sort of speed you you're supposed to try to go as slow as you possibly can. And you're supposed to do it three times and take an average. But the problem is, is that it's very difficult to go super slow. You'll see a lot of people right when the wire breaks, they jump like that. They're that's too fast, right? Like you should be going so slow that when the wire breaks, you just, you barely move. Like and, and anybody who's just like going like this and just putting it down, just doing that, there's no way you can get an accurate number that way because you can't go super slow by just dropping it like this. You need that little base and you need to drop it down like this and it has to go super slow. Watch my video, man. I, I can get a five on there <laughs> with a dull knife right now with a butter knife. <laughs> Had a case test at 800 plus. Damn. Um, thanks to everyone who stopped by my first live earlier. Oh, shout out to Bushcraft. Go and give him a follow, guys. Sounds like he's got a channel. Huge step for me. Appreciate all of you. Well, thank you for joining, man, and congratulations on the first live. I hope you uh had a good time. Uh, I remember my first live. I actually don't remember, but but I'm sure it was badass. Um <laughs> It's definitely a good feeling the first time uh, you get on there and people actually show up because the biggest fear is nobody's going to be here. I remember that. I remember worrying uh, and not going live for a while because I was like, nobody's going to show up. I'm not just going to fucking sit there by myself 
talking to the camera and nobody show up. So but for the first time I did, I think 15 people showed up. I was so happy. I was so happy to just have three. Like, please, somebody fucking show up. I'm going to feel like an idiot. <laughs> um. All right, guys, I'm going to take off. I do appreciate you guys tonight, man. You guys gave a lot of donations, man. I, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, I love the support. I do thank you guys. We have a lot of great com content coming up. I got a fucking backpack that turns into like 20 things uh, that a company sent me. It's literally like, I don't even know. Like it turns into like a tent, a hammock, a fucking, I don't know, all kinds of shit. Like it's crazy. But so I'm going to, um, I'm going to do a video on that. It's pretty dope, but I have so many other things though, guys. I have so much shit in right now. We have a lot of tests coming up. A lot of, like I said, Monday will be the vision video. So watch for that 20 CV versus nitro V versus Civivi's Damascus head to head. We're going to do edge retention tests. We got uh scale damage tests. We got mud tests. We got everything test lock tests. And uh, you guys can see which one did the best. I I'm curious which one you guys think did the best. But uh, you guys will see. Uh, it might shock you. But was this? The apparel, I should have it. I, I was supposed to have it today or tomorrow. So we had, remember we had, we had some issues because our, our knife, we had them made. And they, it wound up being too small. So it, first it was too big, now too small. Now we were shrink, we're getting it the right size. So the next batch is going to be the batch that, that I'll be happy with. I want to make sure I'm happy with it, you know, because this is very important. So we'll probably sell the other ones that we've already bought at a discount. So we'll probably still sell those. They're still good. They're just like, they're, the logos are just a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. That's really the only difference. And then the ones that we settled on will be the regular price just so we can get rid of them. Otherwise I'll probably just wear them, but I want to advertise the ones I'm going to, the ones you guys will be able to buy. Anyways, that'll be very, very soon. As soon as I get them, I'm doing the photo shoot and they'll be up on the site. Thanks, Jared. Have a great weekend, bro. And don't forget about the solar eclipse on Monday. That's what you meant. I gotcha. All right, solar eclipse on Monday. I'm ready. Don't forget the nitro, or sorry, the We Vision and Civivi Vision video on Monday. I think it's going to drop on Monday. I hope so. All right, guys, work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.